Hey there, hi there, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. One and all. To the Baylor Show. We're currently partway into a hot streak on the clan. I guess you can call six a, a pretty reasonable uh, streak with Ironclad. I'm pretty happy with that in general. Um, you know, when I play random runs or for fun runs, it's pretty rare that we get to six in a row ever. So even as that might seem like a comparatively small number, say to say the record, uh, it's a pretty dang good start if you ask me. B Pilgrim, thanks for the prime sub in the seven months. And I can remember a time when no one could envision winning six times in a row on Ascension 20 Heart. Although we took a look back to, into the past uh, a while back for the stream anniversary, we did a uh, 1.0 release Slay the Spire. And I, I'd kind of forgotten how much harder the original version of Spire was with the much worse boss relic pool and the less potion options and the weaker silent cards. It was a, it was a really tough combination that made wind streaking nigh impossible because when you low rolled, you really low rolled. How's it going, Paradox? I'm also very excited to be playing some more Cobalt Core later today. I think we're going to have a grand old time in Cobalt Core. Hunting for some more memory unlocks in that game. Wait a minute. That's not what I meant to do. Oh yeah. I have to tweak some stuff. <laughs> We're not playing Dunfall today. One moment, Twitch chat. One moment. Boop. Normally I remember to do that. But I had a busy weekend, so here we are. <laughs> Streak the Pack Master. Do we ever do a stream of post-mortem stats analysis of the mastery challenge? Not quite yet. I, I realize it has been a while. I'm still in the process of gathering together all the, the juicy bits of stats, which I'm doing with the, the help of some others, including uh, the ever-lovely Faley. And part of getting other people to help you is accepting that it might take a little while. So, soon. Soon we'll be doing a breakdown. I, I think some time away from the challenge has also helped me to kind of like digest it and understand the, the learning a little bit better. I think I do better better looking back with some distance. All right, disable and downfall more now. Re-enable. There's nothing to re-enable, right? Okay, that looks good. We'll verify that that's our 12 mod list. Divinity Kid with Awoken Umbra. That's the exact clan combo we struggled with uh, a lot, Dr. Noodles. Awoken Umbra was really tough. Reveal infinite. Wait, can you use math.max to just with a less than 10 card deck if you upgrade it to the, the B variant? Is that just an easy infinite? To look more at Max's cards in that game. Billy confirms that is one. Yeah, I haven't actually tried making an infinite in Cobalt Core yet. I feel like we gotta do that. Not many quasi infinites. Yeah, Purple Pinky confirms. Yeah, you just need math.max B and basic shot A to form an infinite. And you you assume you accumulate infinite debuffs for next turn. Um, such that you would draw no cards and have no energy on the following turn, but if there is no following turn, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Enrique K says, did you know that Ironclad knows many tidbits about starting fires? Many burning facts. Oof there. B Pilgrim with a prime sub. Thanks for seven months, by the way, during the pre-roll. Piper Pony 100 with the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. 
ARQ555 with a half year. Excited for some Iron Chad. Let's get an ironclad themed dad joke for Dandy G Dub as well. Actually, I'll, I'll tell one of my favorites actually for the ironclad. Did you hear about the ironclad who tried a career in politics? He was ousted for corruption. Dial's been hearing about Cobalt, Col Cobalt Core for the last few days. Is the game good? I think it's a, a delightfully good time. A, a very good deck builder. I wouldn't necessarily uh, call it a roguelite that's quite on the level of something like Slay the Spire or FTL Faster Than Light or um, Hades, but it, it's it's like a, a very solid 8 out of 10 for me so far. Um, lacking a little bit in the variety of bosses in particular, and definitely some cards that are maybe too easily breakable uh, for the types who are bothered by those sorts of things, but it's a, a really delightfully cute time with some great music, some incredibly charming writing, and uh, I'm continually impressed by how reactive it is. I, I'm almost tempted to start doing weird things in combats just to see if my crew members have dialogue lines about it. But yeah, for, for 20 bucks or a little bit less if you grab it on a, a discount. I don't know if it's still on release discount. Probably not. Um, it's a great time. What is on level with those? The, game, the games that I listed are the ones that are on that level. <laughs> not much else exists up there. Quite curious what the uh, FTL devs do now that um, Into the Breach Advance Edition was released finally. That was kind of something they were secretly working on for a couple of years. Now they have actual room and space for a new project. Still 10% off for launch, so you can still grab Cobalt Core at 18 bucks, which is a entirely reasonable price. It does seem like there might be some patches for it coming up, which is exciting. Not every game does get post-release patches of any kind. Looking at you, Potato. Sorry to hear it. <laughs> I was really hoping for a little bit more out of Potato uh, once we hit the 1.0 release, but it seems like it was not to be. Oh well. Adonis Incarnate with 55 months. Heck yeah, we're streaking today. Although, streaking with clothes on, just to be clear. Currently, we're at six wins in a row with the Ironclad. Ironclad, like I said, is a, a pretty win-streakable character, I think, overall. Thanks to a high baseline power level. I think the Ironclad performs pretty well in situations where uh, other characters would fall flat immediately. Hey there, Kieran. Fireworks will streak the whole night. That's cool. If you're not a small dog. Hmm. Alright, I like my starting options here. I've got three options that all look pretty appealing, more so than the boss relic, which is a bit of a gamble on the ironclad. Is it Guardian again? No, it's Hexagos today. I'm glad for a reprieve from the Guardians. Question is, as usual, how many elites in what order do we do? And the answer looks like two. Pretty much no matter where you go, you're doing two elites here. Technically, you could get away with one. The first elite here is forced. Anytime I see a formation like this on the map, I'm not going to boss swap for the most part because a low variance roll could spell your doom. If you get a busted crown and no damage cards, it's already over as soon as you get to floor six here. So that means the second elite is either this one or the burning elite. And if we go the burning elite, uh, I see some problems with that. No fire before this elite is already kind of a disaster. And then no fire at all. Actually, you just get the one before Hexagos. That's pretty unacceptable. So the only path that even looks halfway decent here is this one. You get a fire before the first elite. I'd much rather go 
four combats here to get potions for the elite. Uh, into a second elite with no reprieve? Yikes. There's some fires afterwards, and if we're in really bad shape after the first elite, there's the, the coward's path. Take the white to get the extra rest sites, I guess. And then we can decide event or combat after that, but... This is the only path that looks halfway decent, like I said. No shops on this path mean that Transform is a little bit more appealing. Forced Elite, to me, means that Transform is a little bit less appealing. Uh, recall last time we Transformed 2, we got, like, Corruption Limit Break, I think, or something like that. Which are theoretically useful cards later, but... Short term, they don't help with the Elite. That is, again, mandatory. Personally, I'm heavily inspired to take a common relic here. Yeah, nice and safe. Definitely nice and safe. Almost all of the common relics provide some kind of advantage. And even the bad common relics are best when you get them early, like Tiny Chest or Omomori or Juzu Bracelet. And this would actually be a genuinely really good time to find a Maw Bank, right? Because it would just give us money for the entire act. Maw Bank would be as good as Old Coin. If I were to remove something, it would probably just be a strike. I'm perfectly happy with five strikes and offends going through this Act 1. You don't really want to remove that many cards going into Hexaghost anyway. Give me a common relic. Get a bag of preparation. That's no common relic. That's uncommonly good. Giving us two more cards on turn one. Never having a bad turn one, essentially, is how I like to think of this thing, and that's always great. The Ironclad slash Silent. Double Starter Relic. What I like most about Bag of Prep is that it makes cards that generate energy much easier to take. Already we want to take Bloodletting now. And it can help set up powers. It just ensures that you never draw. You know, if you do draw 5 Strikes or 5 Defends on turn 1, at least you're also drawing something else. That sort of deal. Let's see, we definitely want to strike the front louse so that we can kill it next turn? Hmm. Only if I draw a strike, I guess. Interesting problem. Alright, well, let's hit them both. That way we can at least hit, kill the back one with Bash. But I think we might actually get bodied here by this front louse. Since we drew too many strikes on turn one, we now can't kill it. Yeah, we can't kill it. But I can block for 15. Take only one more. That seems fine. The back one can't attack next turn, so it has to buff. We're guaranteed to draw two strikes to kill the front one. So yeah, we take two damage, we leave the fight. Beards and Bacon with three years of support on your way to four metric years. Martin scores easy with 27. May I get to 27 0? It's quite a, uh, quite a lofty goal, but I hope so. And Hapfi with 21 months of the Prime sub. My favorite, favorite relics from each rarity. Favorite common relic? Probably the Preserved Insect, although Bag of Prep's also a good contender. Favorite uncommon relic is gonna be... Hmm. Tough choice between Mummified Hand and... Oh yeah, like, Boat Thingy, Mummy Hand, and... Um, Toxic and Frozen Egg both are, are all pretty good candidates here. I'm not actually sure which one to pick, but there's a, a quick handful of you. Top five, top four, whatever. Favorite rare relic is definitely Pocket Watch. Favorite boss relic is Runic Pyramid. Favorite shop relic, probably Brimstone. Although I really like a lot of shop relics. The Waffle too, of course. Tough Bandages is a good pick. Tingsha's fun. Have I played Into the Breach? We did a ton of Into the Breach, Mr. Gregor. We, um, and we did unfair difficulty on every squad except the secret squad on stream when, uh, Advanced Edition came out. I was, I was trounced by secret squad on unfair difficulty. I couldn't beat it. Armaments with more cards on turn one is, is really nice. I'm thinking about True Grit here, but looking at the extra card draw, Armaments becomes a, a really good pick. Because upgraded Armaments 
lets you upgrade all of your cards, and even unupgraded armaments chooses one of the cards in your hand. Therefore, the more cards you have in your hand, the more options you have for what that upgrade is. That's a form of scaling. Primstone is just another gameplay setting. Yeah, I, I do like the armaments here. Trugit can be a, a game changer over the course of a run. It, I think it might even be very wise in general to pick up the first targeted exhaust option that you see as clad, but I really do like this Arma in the current position, so let's give it some love here. And I am going to lock us into a hard pool fight later on. I think with the Bag of Prep we'll be just fine. Got some really interesting turn one draws going on, though, that's for sure. Imagine this without the Bag of Prep, though. We'd have drawn four blocks in the Ascender's Bane into this opening. That would have been miserable. At least now I can bash strike the little guy. Or I can armaments the bash and upgraded bash on the Acid Slime. Hold on. Can I kill the Acid Slime next turn? Because if I can, I want to. We are guaranteed to get three strikes. With Weaken and Vulnerable, I think they do six, right? Six times 1.5 times 0.75 is 6.75. That's right. So they do six. So we'd have to bring it to 18 or uh, just 18 or less, huh? No, there's no way. I'd have to bash strike, surely. If we bash strike, we deal 17. And then next turn, we deal 18. That's enough. So we can kill it next turn by doing bash strike. But then we take 6 plus 6. If we bash strike right now, the next turn we can strike, strike, defend. Worst case scenario, we're taking 7, which is less than 12. So we should do this. And sometimes we only take 3. Although we can take more on a future turn here. We can take a, a full 12 here, potentially. Why do I open my mouth? It was possible we didn't take more than three. Uh, as it is, we end up taking seven plus three, which is still less than 12. So we still came out ahead versus killing the green, green slime first. So I definitely think we made the right choice here. Blood Potion's an excellent early find, a little bit more healing. Rest in a jar, you can think of it as. And Anger is spectacular with Bag of Preparation, a zero cost attack that will draw into more easily. It's also a pretty good armaments target. Terrainco with a 35 months. Falcon says, why is A18 so hard with silence? Because the elites in particular really want you to kill them quickly uh, on the highest ascension levels. They get really nasty abilities such that you have to end fights fast. And silent just is not very good at ending fights fast. Silent wants to hang around in a fight, slowly whittle down her opponent and keep full blocking at every opportunity. High ascension doesn't let you do that. Terrainco! Did I thank you already? Thanks for 35 months. I think I did thank you already. Have another one. <laughs> Juicy Clash, though. If only the Clash was actually usable. Ever. It would be great. It seems like so much damage until you realize how rarely you can play it. Iron Wave is not the worst card in this position, either. I mean, Clash is the worst card in this position. But, uh, it's alright. Wow, I can upgrade this Armaments right now? That's kind of hot. I can also upgrade the Anger or the Bash, but I say we upgrade Armaments. Unless we're transforming here. We might be transforming here. It's a nice upgrade, though. Definitely makes our first Elite a lot safer. But we can upgrade the armaments before the elite anyway, and then we'll have a random card. Jam Scampy with a five months slay that spire. Transforming a card is pretty sweet. We get to get rid of a strike card, which is what I would transform here. You might argue for defend, but I think with an anger, I'm always getting rid of my strikes. My general rhetoric is that if you're not beating the act boss, you should transform over removing. But if you need the upgrade for an Elite, you should upgrade. I don't feel like we need the upgrade for an Elite. 
Let's transform. Let's see what we get. Dustbin Goblin, thanks for the tier one sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. We get an Evolve. I'm quite happy with that. That's definitely going to be better than a Strike. Any fight where we would need the extra Strike, the Evolve will help us out. That's going to be useful against Sentries if we encounter them, and useful later in the game against Hexaghost, plus great for Act 3 and 4. Right now, though, it is worse than a Strike. That's the simple truth. In this fight, anyway. What I mean by right now. Let's see. I'd have to draw Bash Strike Anger, or Bash Anger Anger. Attack for 11 next turn. Makes you to 19. I'm gonna try reading this one hit point. Easy. 74 hit points. And I am thrilled with a headbutt here, although you can also make a very reasonable argument for Reckless Charge. Putting a Dazed into the draw pile has a combo with Evolve. Can become draw positive if we upgrade the Evolve. That part's kind of cool. Here's it going, Dustbin Goblin. Dustbin says, long time YouTube watcher, first time Twitch subber. Hoping to pick up some tips and tricks for E20. You're definitely in the right place. Thing is, Headbutt is also awesome with Evolve. Headbutt's just a really good card. And I love it for putting Anger back on top. I'm happy to pick up a later Reckless Charge, but I want this Headbutt. You can put a status card back on top. You can put a good card back on top. You can do anything you want. We have some extra hit points here, thanks to Burning Blood. Very happy with a very easy combat. I'm actually happy we haven't found too many potions yet either. Hoping we get a potion from this as we go into our elite fight. Question is, do I Arma Defend, play an unupgraded strike, or Arma the Strike, take two, since we're overhealed anyway, to deal three more. We have 19 damage in the draw pile, so as long as we're striking this one, we can get a kill anyway. Let's upgrade the Defend then. Headbutt kills this one next turn. We might take a hit from this thing. Cool. It's just Headbutt Anger. I do 19 only if I draw the Bash or three strikes and an Anger. Maybe the defend is safer. Three. Give me the defend. Yeah, that worked out. Okay, so we leave this fight on full HP, which is as good as you could possibly hope for going into the elite. Don't get the potion we wanted, but we do get offered a freaking carnage, which sure does the damage. Carnage might even be sufficiently powerful that we slap an upgrade on it instead of armaments now. Carnage plus with a headbutt definitely slaps. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, and this is the downside to Carnage, definitely. We don't have to keep Carnage if we don't want to, but I don't see why I wouldn't play it here. It's a pretty acceptable draw pile, too. We have most of our block cards in the draw pile. So this fight is definitely a question of how many times we get to play Carnage and how many of those times do we get to apply Vulnerable for. 
I could play this Evolve to avoid redrawing it, or we can deal six damage. I think the way this fight goes, I want to get this out of the draw pile. Okay, do I want to headbutt Carnage? I don't think so. I might want to headbutt Bash and play Armaments Bash. That can probably secure us the kill. That'll mean taking 15 more damage next turn, 10 damage this turn, but I think that's probably worth it. Because if I just put Carnage on top, we don't do that much damage. Kind of waste the armaments. Could just put an Anger on top, play Anger, upgrade a Defend, take not that much. But that's not getting us through the fight quickly enough. I think we need to get the Vuln down for the next Carnage. Thankfully we didn't draw the Carnage. Our ideal next turn is that we draw a Carnage Headbutt, and then we can Vuln Carnage twice. Definitely got to trade some health in this fight to get ahead here. Did not get Carnage, unfortunately. I think it might be enough though, right? Yeah, we're at 42 now. We're about to have minus two strength, so this will do... 26 times 1.5 is 39 damage, and then the headbutt will kill. So we're fine. But you can see that if we hadn't face tanked um, the hit in order to play Bash, then we would have had to face tank this hit instead, which would deal even more damage to our face. So by taking that aggressive line through the fight, we end up saving quite a bit of health here. Might have been possible to, to save a little bit more, but we're going to be in a strong position either way. Oh my god, we're going to be in a really strong position here because we have freaking Gambling Chip Bag of Prep as the first two relics. Synergy is happening here. Gambling Chip says, on turn one, discard any number of cards, then draw that many. So normally you can discard up to five to draw up to five. Now we can discard up to seven because of Bag of Prep to draw up to seven more cards allowing us to look at up to 14 cards on turn one, making it exceedingly easy to get stuff like turn one Carnage or turn one Evolve, or now turn one Feel No Pain, which I am super going to click on because it's a very powerful combo card that works with a lot of things in Spire, and we are well ahead of the curve now. We've got Bag of Prep, Gambling Chip, a Carnage Plus, two very strong potions, and only one more elite before Hexa goes. So I can easily get away with a Feel No Pain here. And then we're going to look for a targeted exhaust card like a True Grit or a Burning Pact. No, this interaction does not depend on which of the two relics you have first. This combo always works well together. It's just really good. Samamir with seven months of support. Thank you, thank you. Hmm, how do I want this to play? Let's discard Carnage so I can headbutt it. Unless I'm playing Feel No Pain and getting block off of it, but I think I want to get it back. Full block for the moment. There's 28. If I draw any other attack, we're good. Which we are. Perfect fight. We heal six. And if we get a potion, I can just drink the blood pot, which we do. So we're back to full HP now with two potions. Now that we have a feel no pain in the deck, something like an infernal blade becomes a bit more appealing. Generate a random attack and gain three block. You can also upgrade that random attack with the armaments, potentially. Parallel 3D with the Prime sub, the full year get. Thank you, thank you. Are there any relics which do depend on the order that they are picked up in? Yes. Uh, off the top of my head, the, the quick situations for those are relics that apply debuffs to enemies at the start of combat. So, Bag of, prep, bag of Marbles, the Red Mask, and the Twisted Funnel depend on their order, which can be relevant for enemies that have artifact charges, because the ordering of your relics will then affect which debuffs are blocked by the artifact. Um, and it also matters for any artifact that generates an orb at the start of combat, so the cracked core and the nuclear battery and the 
symbiotic virus are all order dependent. Take that Infernal Blade. And we're definitely going to go into, into an elite here. We have two excellent potions. I mean, Liquid Memories, Carnage, very strong. We can also help use that to help potentially get through Hexaghost here. So far, it seems like we are off to a very strong star, which I always like to see when wind streaking here, because it makes my life a lot easier. Ink bottle. Whenever we play 10 cards, draw one card. All of our relics draw more cards so far, and that's pretty dang strong in general. I think the Ironclad can really struggle with card draw, so having a ton of it for free from our relics is superb. How do I want this fight to go? I'm happy to use my fire potion here, although we don't need to. Who took my cheese? I can give you a cheese-themed dad joke, but I can't guarantee that it will be any Gouda. No refunds. Carabola Streams, thanks for the Prime sub and the 12 months of support. Also just like, bonk these fools. We have Feel No Pain and Evolve. Kinda wins the fight, right? Only once I actually start drawing the days is the thing. But if I discard everything except Evolve on turn one, then we redraw into those dazed awfully quick now, don't we? Let's try it. This is taking the defensive route. Next turn we can play Armaments Defend. That's pretty good. Let's play the Infernal Blade. It's only three block instead of five, but we get to do some damage this turn with Heavy Bonk. I like it. Oh, Carnage is here. We could Carnage Strike, take only 10. Although if I Armaments Defend, don't play the Carnage, it blocks for three. And you know what? That's even better. Oh yeah, because I discarded it turn one. That makes sense. So headbutt armaments, I guess. So I can upgrade the anger. Headbutt, headbutt, armaments. Be a block card next turn. Just guaranteeing our safety on turns where I can. Heavy blade plus. I do want to set up Ink Bottle as much as possible by playing more cards before the end of the fight. Um, I could even really get extreme with this if I really want to. That feels like complete overkill. I'm good with seven. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> it's It's happening. The easiest infinite in the world. Actually, that second win looks insane, right? Second win destroying status cards in the Hexaghost fight is a big deal. 
Fistfuls of cheese. Thanks for the prime sub and the 23 months. So from this position, we have what's uh, easy access to an infinite combo, essentially. With the Sundial, every three times we shuffle the draw pile, we'll gain two energy. To fully abuse the Sundial on Ironclad, you want to use cards that exhaust other cards to exhaust all the cards in your deck, except for one or two that say draw cards on them, and then just use those in a loop to play each other. The reason this is particularly exciting is because the Bag of Preparation, the Gambling Chip, and the Ink Bottle together are going to make it way easier for us to exhaust all the other cards in the deck as soon as we find cards that do so. And that means we get a very quick and fast setup into an infinite combo, which is going to be obscenely strong. Hummel Strike is one of the pieces we can use for that combo. Meanwhile, Second Wind is an excellent card to get that combo set up and is just a really broken card in general. So I'm going to click on the Second Wind. I don't actually need to use the Sundial here if we get a Dark Embrace. Now we can upgrade the armaments. Although we could also consider upgrading Feel No Pain. With, uh, again, our, our immense potential for card draw, I think Arma upgrade's pretty good. Telemachus, thanks for the 14 months. How many is a Baylor's dozen? Not nearly enough, I say. That's a bunch of slimes. And I've got an Arma Plus, which looks quite excellent here. What would I like to draw into? Headbutt. Headbutt upgraded can kill one. I do like Arma into Anger Strike Strike. That only kills again one of them, though. Carnage is also acceptable here. With Carnage, we can kill two of them. I can Carnage, Carnage one, Anger Strike another. I think that's the best we're going to get. Rob Zor with 40 months of support, 4 metric years, and OCV28 with the 9 months. Twitch baby get. A card that can hit multiple enemies at the same time is definitely something this deck is lacking currently. Relative weakness for the deck at the moment. Although that can be excusable at times. If your single target is good enough, then even the multi-enemy fights aren't too bad. Could have set up the Sundial in this fight. Maybe should have. Hmm. Impervious is not the sort of card that helps us beat Hexagos, but is the sort of card that's really awesome. Ease an aid with 10 months of the Prime Sub. Just hoping it goes all the way. Me too. Very hard to turn down an Impervious under any circumstances. 30 block plus exhaust is just a, a basically an entire turn to yourself to do whatever you wish. That's quite excellent. Are we too healthy for Hexagos? Not if I can just play Impervious on the, uh, on the burn turn, right? Just block it. Yeah, worst case, we take a bunch and then we still have a bunch of health. So, how do we feel about cards versus events here? With the Evolve and the Second Wind, I feel defensively okay against Hexaghost. Offensively, I think we're lacking a little bit here. We also have two potions. We've got pretty good reasons to take an event here, huh? An event could be an artifact, it could be an extra hard fight. It could also be nothing. Remove would be good. Might have wanted to consider Blood for Blood over Impervious. I, I do recognize that that Blood for Blood could have been a good damage option. I agree with that. Let's have a look at all the possible events we could have. Big Fish would be gain 5 max health for us. Dead Adventure is awesome. That's We definitely want that. Golden Idol would be okay. We could lose some current health for an advantage long term. Mushrooms is better than a combat. Scrap Ooze is lose health and get a relic. Both of those are pretty good. Shining Light, lose health, get upgrades. Pretty good deal. Cleric is a card remove. That's okay. Serpent we ignore. That's a dead floor and bad. 
Wing statue's not bad. We get a card remove. World of Goop, we lose health and gain money. So I'd say pretty much all of these are pretty positive. Of the unlikely events that we can get... Bonfire Spirits is, is better than Cleric is. With Duplicator, we can dupe the Feel No Pain or the Carnage. Get 50 gold. That won't help us this act, but I'm not too worried about dying to Hexaghost. I don't think that's going to happen. Match and Keep could be bad. Spin the Wheel could be bad. So of the Shrine events, there are a couple that are bad, but mostly good. So on average, pretty likely to get positive outcome from the event and moderately likely to get a strong positive outcome. Let's let's roll it. We get the 5 max L from the, the big fish. Or we could take the Relic and the Curse, which I don't love. With second win, the Curse is not so bad, but I don't think we should take this into Hexaghost. Let's just have even more hit points. You guys again. This is really easy Act 1. Just headbutt that. So we can go into the Hexaghost fight with 80 hit points if we want to. Might as well set up a um, Sundial. Since I can. Full health. Not desirable. Oh, we get Disarm. Okay. That ought to help a bit, too. That gives us even more time against Hexaghost. So, I don't think we kill Hexaghost before Inferno, and I also don't think that we care is where we end up here. How's it going, Krogzar? Thanks for the generous Tier 2 sub and 52 heckin' months of support. Upgrade Disarm is definitely what I'm thinking about here. That'll make Hexaghost even less threatening, and it's a good upgrade long-term. Armaments can hit Bash and Anger for us. That's no problem. I don't need Feel No Pain. The other arguable upgrade here would be Evolve, so that we can get even more card draw off the burns. But I'm definitely taking this Disarm. But yeah, I think there's there's maybe a reasonable discussion on Disarm versus Evolve here for the upgrade. Evolve lets us draw more cards per each burn drawn. That means second win is going to work better. It also means that we're going to draw the Angers faster. Disarm just makes the Hexaghost less threatening, which is going to save us quite a bit of health. Admittedly. This is one card more per burn we draw. Yeah, currently we don't make our own statuses, so that Disarm upgrade will definitely be better in the long term. It, like, looking at Act 2, probably. Okay, let's upgrade the Disarm. Do get Disarm turn 1. Let's discard everything else as we're looking for Evolve and Feel No Pain to get down early. We might also hit Carnage, which is fine. Okay, the other option is we upgrade the Evolve and lose the Carnage. We do this fight without Carnage. Hmm. The good news is we've got Impervious coming up next turn. Hmm. Can headbutt the evolve. That's also true. Although if I if I want to play Armaments Carnage, I have to I have to use Headbutt and Liquid Memory shenanigans to get both in play, probably. Hmm. It's definitely gonna be hard to do enough damage without uh Carnage. We probably can do it with the anger, but no, I don't think we should try. Skip Evolve for now, then. Oh, no. 
Hmm. Ink Bottle has betrayed us. It would have been a convenient full block. This would also be a convenient Liquid Memories on Armaments, huh? Hmm. I guess I don't need Feel No Pain Plus. Just go fill the pain, defend, strike here. Yeah, and we're redrawing into Evolve before we actually get the burns, so the Evolve did not need to be played the first time. Let me just go defend, fill the pain, strike here. We don't need to panic yet. Plenty of health, which we will need to use. if I wanted to play that bash. Okay, so we can choose not to play the Evolve if we think it's important. I think it is. Is it more important than just getting 42 damage, though? That's the question. Let's just go Carnage Evolve. One in three that we draw Bash here, and I really want to play it if we do. I guess I go Arma first. Got Blood for Blood. That is definitely going to help. Thank you, Infernal Blade. So I guess the answer was get rid of Carnage the whole time. Okay. <laughs> oh well. We should be winning this fight, so all is well. Upgrade that Bash. There we go. Arma finally getting the job done. Perfect. Keep headbutting angers. Flip. Slap. Give him a slap. Did you know it's Inferno next turn? Excellent. Behold, Inferno. I know I could have killed, but this is funnier. Taunting the Hexagos. GG. Okay, that was no problem at all. We are definitely well ahead of the curve now. We've got lots of powerful defensive options for later in the game and an acceptable offensive engine for now. We're being offered Reaper Demon Form Berserk. A Reaper is definitely interesting here, although currently we lack the strength to make it powerful. Demon form could be a way for us to scale, but kind of awkward here. Don't really like Berserk much. Don't like any of these that much. Would have much preferred something like an Offering here, or a Corruption. I guess you could argue for Berserk because we have enough defense to get away with it, and we can consistently get it into play early, too. Would really want an upgrade. It's not the world's worst Berserk, I'll admit. And it can help making make playing some of the expensive cards like Bash and Carnage a bit easier. I'd prefer other ways of gaining energy, but I guess it could work. This is already a deck that wants lots of powers. It's definitely a problem when you get too many powers. 
Reaper can be very consistently nice. And we've already got the part of the exhaust synergy and that alone is good reason to take it. I'm gonna grab Reaper here. I think I'm never unhappy with Reaper. And I'll skip these, uh, the colorless potion here, looking at our boss relics, which include Astrolabe, Cursed Key, Runic Cube. Oh my. What fun options here. All of these are cool in their own right. Cursed Key gives us more energy per turn, but curses us upon opening a non-boss chest, which can be quite the bad. Second Wind can delete curses, of course, and the Gambling Chip can help with them too. Astrolabe would transform and upgrade three cards, probably get rid of three strikes here. That would give us potentially something good, but also potentially nothing which is not what you want from your boss relic. Runic Cube, whenever we lose health, draw one. Can be a very powerful draw engine. Even more card draw added. And with the Sundial, even more card draw is a really powerful thing. I would actually strongly consider this Runic Cube. Plus we have Reaper to heal back too. I think it's between key and cube here. Curse key is very consistently good with just having more energy. Being able to play armaments plus carnage plus headbot or armaments defend carnage is very valuable. Does cube open more infinites? Kind of. Yeah, kind of. Cube definitely allows us to get energy from the Sundial more often, that's for sure. I feel like we're already headed towards a 10-card hand deck, though. I'm gonna grab the key here. Let's hit some shops, we're rich. Hey, a shop. Excellent. Probably don't want to do that. Ooh, this path looks nice. Look at all these fires. Upgrade everything. There's also... Maybe this path? Elite, elite... Meh. No, I think we go... Really shop here. Let me just do four combats. Combats will be easy. Most combats should heal us. Maybe after we evaluate the shop, we can we can say that we're actually good enough to do the Burning Elite and do three Elites. That'd be potentially a thing. If we get Preserved Insect or some other big spike of damage, like a Sling of Courage, that could also influence our decision. Definitely want to start here, though. Gives us the most options. From this shop, we can go anywhere in the act. So we have the most optionality from there. So I could play Reaper Impervious here. I don't actually think that's good enough. I am going to play the Impervious, though. Yeah, Carnage Impervious. Now we're talking. Usually go for the back guy first. He's ultimately the more threatening of the two. He's a jerk. The Mugger, he's called. Easy peasy. Get carnage, friend. Secret carnage. Yeah, thanks, Sundial. Can I get away with my money? I will spend the fire potion if I have to. Fortunately, I do not. Mediocrity. Sabin with the Prime sub of the 22 months. Did you know you can use your Twitch Prime, which is free with Amazon Prime, to sub to free for your favorite streamer? Twitch Prime every time. Cleave. That's true. We don't have any AoE. I don't really consider unupgraded Cleave to actually help anything, though. It's not even enough to kill a gremlin. Although I suppose it's better than nothing, right? Hmm.
Nah. Don't think that's cutting it. I don't think so. a little more. Give me the defend plus back, I guess. One of the impervious for later in the fight. Don't know that that was quite the right choice. Looks like we're only going to be down two health, though, which is totally fine by me. Strength will make all of our other attacks do more damage, most crucially Reaper for more healing. Scales Anger really well also. Warcry Plus is admittedly also pretty good, works wonders with Evolve, and can be used to set up fun stuff with Reaper, blocks with Feel No Pain. But I think getting some Strength is more important here than the Warcry. That would make something like Cleave a little bit better. There's our AoE. Immolate is here. There's also, I note, a medical kit, which allows us to play status cards, causing them to exhaust instantly. Which, with Feel No Pain, is kind of a thing. Uh, also an on-sale True Grit, which is super getting purchased here. We saw a couple True Grits earlier. I passed on them to take other, arguably better cards. But we'd certainly still want one. Very expensive, this Immolate, at 176 gold, but well worth it. Um, actually, Juggernaut is also kind of insane here, right? Who's our act boss? Fighting Bronze Automaton. Man, Juggernaut. Juggernaut is interesting. This could be a shocking amount of damage in a clad deck. Especially with Second Wind. Immolate does so much better against the Elites, though, is the thing. Currently, we're really lacking against Slavers and Gremlin Leader. You could maybe solve those fights with the... Juggernaut, but it'll be much more easily solved by Immolate. Meanwhile, later on... Once we get to the boss fight, we're going to strongly prefer Juggernaut over um, Immolate here. We can get them both. <laughs> hmm, how much do I actually want Medical Kit here? Ideally, I'm using Second Wind to get rid of the statuses, not playing them directly. I can do something like Immolate, True Grit, Remove. I do like removing a strike quite a lot. I think paying this much money for two rares is too much to do. We've got other ways we can solve the boss still. We got lots of card rewards coming up. Let's do this. Okay. Does that mean we can take the Burning Elite now? I have an Immolate. I have a 
Liquid Memories, and I have a Gambling Ship Bag of Prep. I also have a Disarm for Book of Stabbing. I think we can probably do it. Go this way now. That way we get an extra Relic. We get less upgrades, but that's okay. We've got an Armaments Plus. We also open up our Pathing next act. Yeah, let's do this. Gain a relic for a ride. Guess what? With Bank of Prep Gambling Chip, we always draw this curse on turn one, and then we always discard it. So it's kind of like it starts in the, dis in the discard pile. And we get a relic in exchange. I'll take it. That relic upgrades our True Grit, which is pretty sweet. This is a great fight for Evolve, plus feel no pain. Gotta kill this cultist. It's okay. It's fine. Gotta take damage to make damage. Nice chain reaction there. Um, I want that for next turn. Okay. Thank you for not making this complicated. Chosen one. HP, still have our two potions. Almost Strike can be a piece of the infinite combo that we can form. Although it does require an upgrade for that, I think it's well worth picking up for that possibility. Jay Dublinson with the 22 months. The other second wind is also okay. Uppercut can serve quite well also, busting through artifact layers in Bronze Automaton. But with a infinite piece put before us, I think we should take it. Max health, fat gremlins. With gremlin leader attacking us on turn one. What a day to be alive. No sign of our immolate, alas. But we do get impervious disarm, at least. in this fight. Fortunately, Immolate won't kill them next turn, at least not alone. That's fine, though. We get weak and frail for a while as well. Immolate, hello. Son of a gun. That's unfortunate. Alright, you gotta die. Just how it is. Okay, that's vaguely acceptable. Although not what you want to see, right? What for blood's not even enough to kill it! Okay, the good news is we can headbutt the Immolate, maybe. Bad news is I can Liquid Memories it instead, I guess. We're going to get 100% attack next turn if I can't kill a Gremlin here. So, feels almost mandatory. 
to liquid memories are immolates. Don't love that. But this is definitely one of the nastiest burning leads to get the leader here with a really awkward draw and a bad initial summon. I'm not going to mess around in this fight. I think it's a really bad idea to do so. Okay, now we can again set up the Headbutt Immolate to kill the fresh wave of minions. Problem is we won't have any block. With 7 strength, Grum Leader could decide to absolutely slaughter us here, which would be very unhappy times for us. The second wind, I guess. I really want to use either of these to delete the other, so I won't. Okay, no attack. That's good. Okay, okay. Merciful Gremlin Leader. We are through this situation, and I'm happy about it. I'm pretty sure we're through here. 18 health left. Guess I'd better take Pummel Strike then. The only way to guarantee we get what we're looking for here. By looking at one more card. And that is something that I will happily take here. Exit from this fight, thank you. What a nerve wracking experience. We end up taking zero damage, but it just as easily could have been 50. We do get a potion back. We also get the Tungsten Rod whenever we would lose health, lose one less. And a second Feel No Pain, which I will take. Now, we ended up spending two of our potions, which hurt a bit, but I think worth it to get the Burning Elite in the bag here, Act 2. And now let's upgrade Pummel Strike. Or I could upgrade Immolate. You know. Food for thought. Now I'll upgrade the, the uh, Pummel Strike. We'll see how this next Elite goes. It's the Book of Stebbing. We got Disarmed turn one. Which you do like to see. I'm going to lose the Carnage here. I'm not ready to play it. I could do Bash True Grit. That's not good enough, though. Keep that upgraded Bash for later. It's okay to take a little bit of damage here. Each time we get hit by the book, we gain a wound, which will only fuel the deck further. I'll willingly take a little bit here. One plus three. You get two wounds. You get the rest of the powers in play now. Anything I want to headbutt? Let's headbutt the True Grid, yeah? We can go Feel No Pain and Flame, Headbutt, True Grid, Defend. Or I can play Headbutt afterwards and put Bash on top with the Sundial set up. Let's do that. Feel No Pain and Flame. Defend. Headbutt. Bash. Anger. Now we can play Bash. Immolate. Defend, defend. Seems good to me. Hmm. This is 13 block per card, so just playing a second win is a full block, actually. Easy life. What a great time to draw Reaper. Give me my health back, please. And set up Sundial, please. We actually used the Sundial in this fight quite meaningfully, so I'm happy we had it. 
Look at that, 71 health out of the Book of Stabbing. The book gives us its own counter, the bronze scales. We're back up to two potions. And if I want, there's a Wild Strike Plus here, but I don't think that I want that. Epic of Evisceration. How am I going to beat Bronze Automaton? Hmm. I'm kind of worried about that fight now. The Novella of Needles. I need to know what's in this chest, that's for sure. We're going to open this. Shame and an unceasing top. Does that work? That might work. We'd really have to burn down the deck, though. Oh, yeah, we have Anger? Lesbian Ninetales, thanks for the three months of support in advance. I can actually see this, um, this working quite well. I'm thinking about going to the shop, though. I'm going to take this. I'm a little worried about our automaton fight currently. Little Hawk, what is the ironclad drink in the morning with his breakfast? An immolate. Tasty. my face, unfortunately. I really want these potions for the boss. We don't actually have good card draw, do we? Hmm. 2nd Pommel Strike. Okay. Okay. I didn't need to worry so hard. Excellent! So now we can, we can beat the Bronze Automaton with a Pommel Infinite. It might even be, depending on how the draw order lines up, that we actually benefit from the Bronze Automaton's minions stealing our cards, because they can take Immolate away from us, for example. I can lose this Forge Potion. Alright, so our job here at the shop is to remove... ...nothing and take a Corruption, I guess. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Hmm... If I take a Corruption, I can't play it for a while. Yeah, it gets me almost there. It's not enough. So we have a few more uh, undesirable cards we have to get rid of. We're going to keep the Shame, because Second Wind can dispose of it. It's better to remove Strikes at the moment. I think this is the point at which I wish I had taken the... Uh, 
Rennick cube instead of the curse key. Yeah, I think we should stick with the plan. I, I think I agree with that. Adding cards is not going to help. Not even the corruption at the moment. We should have a win con for this boss fight. Although I'm worried it'll take too long. Good luck to us. Haha. <laughs> okay, we can't take this. Even more curses would be unacceptable. One of the downsides of the curse key, unfortunately. And we should upgrade the other pommel strike for the ease of simplicity here. I think so. One dark embrace would make our life a lot easier, that's for sure. As would blue candle. Definitely. Percent. Okay, we're super playing double fuel of vein. This is only six healing. Immolate does a ton of damage. Need to win this fight. Bird knows the secret of the bronze scales. That's okay. Unceasing top, go! The power. Um, this is the wrong number for the relics to be on, that's for dang sure. Let's try to fix that. Can't fix that. Fair enough. This is also a infinite piece potentially. It definitely buys us time because it's a good card. Get in here. Okay, we can upgrade one card before the Bronze Automaton fight to try to make things a little bit easier. I guess an Immolate upgrade could help a bit by improving our AoE damage and therefore also improving the damage we do to the Bronze Automaton. Could upgrade in Flame for just a little bit more damage, or we could upgrade Evolve in the event that we plan on playing Immolate more than one time. I do kind of want them to steal in Immolate, but there's no guarantee they will. Pen Pen, thanks for the 36 months, three heckin' years. That's right, we have a block positive infinite now. All we need to do is be able to get the deck exhausted down to the Shrug It Off and the Pummel Strike. We're going to want some Burning Packs and True Grits to achieve that. Zagasu with 38 months of support. Hmm... Could also even just rest for 14 health if I'm really nervous here, which I kind of am. Although if we can cut a time off of the f a turn off of the fight, it'll be even better. I guess buying ourselves a turn to get set up is an option. Hmm. I guess I'm struggling to see the Inflame upgrade making a difference here in how this Automaton fight plays out. Is it ever banana? I do kind of like the rest line. Let's try it out. A little scared of this fight currently. We're just a bit too slow for the boss, is the current problem. Okay, good turn one-ish. Good-ish turn one. 
Definitely play Evolve, feel no pain, feel no pain. I suppose I want a Pommel Strike, because it would be even better if I drew my exhausting card, the True Grit. I was hoping to headbutt True Grit, but simply playing all the powers is good. We definitely want to lose Carnage in this fight. The goal is to lose every card. So currently they're stealing Disarm and Flame, which is not desirable. Okay, True Good is here. We want to True Good every non-exhausting attack, pretty much. We're still taking Disarm and Flame, I guess. So I'm going to True Good the Bash, and then second win these block cards. And then I guess I'm just going to strike you. We draw the Ascender's Bane, that's probably good. So I have no compulsion to get Disarm and Flame back. This is probably worth playing, though. We do need to do some damage. I'm getting that. Burn isn't going to hurt too bad, thanks to Evolve. Is the time for block potion. We'll have another chance, I'm sure of it. Okay, yes, headbutt true grit. Very important. At every opportunity, we must headbutt the true grit. Next turn, we can true grit the anger. Then pommel strike, maybe redraw into the true grit. Still have enough health to survive Hyper Beam. That's quite important. This first. Now we have to keep True Grit. Tempting, though. I guess we do True Grit, then second win. That's fine. It's worth losing Impervious to get rid of another status here. This would be the time for the block pot. This is not desirable, of course. I guess we just play in flame so we don't draw it again. It's still important to get rid of as many cards as we can here. Um, we could also activate the Sundial by using the Distilled Chaos, but I really don't want to play these three cards. We're running out of time, though, as you can see. Oh, good, we got Headbutt True Good again. That's good, at least. We're just down to the, the double pommels or is what's going to make this work here. I think we're going to get there. Ooh. Okay, second win deleting these two is great. And we full block. We're down to not that many cards. Second win, delete these two. True Grit, delete Bludgeon. Oh uh, no, True Grit first, don't be fool. We're down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. We should be there. So pummel Strike. Pummel Strike. Yeah, we're there. So now that we can just play Pummel Strike into Pummel Strike, each time we play Pummel Strike, we try to draw two cards. There's only one card in the discard pile. Uh, and Slay the Spire interprets this situation as shuffling two times for some reason. So you'll see the Sundial incrementing two times. 
And that means we can play this card back and forth infinitely with itself. As much as we want. We can even armaments Reaper at the very end here. We have made it through. Looks like we could have done without a rest, but I'm plenty happy with how this played out. GG. We're into Act 3. We get a freaking offering, man. That will speed things up for us. By drawing a lot of cards. Also, only costs 5 health, thanks to Tungsten Rod. like that a lot better than Exhum or Double Tap. But as you can see, that took us entirely too long to get the infinite going. So in order to make this occur faster, we're going to need to remove more cards from the deck and add more ways to exhaust cards. Or we could add more wounds. <laughs> How about a Slaver's Collar? We get extra energy during boss and elite fights. Third option, Sneko Eye. Randomize the cost of every card we draw. Completely ruins any attempt to go infinite. Seems like a bad strat. We'd rather just take the additional energy output during the elite fights. Helps us get set up in those fights that much faster, although I am definitely a little worried about, say, Reptomancer. Krogzar was hoping for Empty Cage. That would have been pretty nice. Energy will have to do here. Energy will have to do. So, cards we're looking for at the moment. True Grit, Dark Embrace, Burning Pact. Another Second Wind is fine. Multiple shops is good, because we can potentially remove multiple cards across multiple shops, although it's 125 for the first remove, so I'm not so sure about that. And that means we want to keep taking combats, because we need to find card rewards to find cards that exhaust stuff. This deck would definitely take a corruption, as that would make going infinite so much easier, because all of our skills would be zero costs. Although I think the Dark Embrace would be easier. Easier way to do it. Yeah, we definitely want to go for more elites. Hmm. Bit scared of Reptomancer. Uh oh. These jerks. How do we even deal with these jerks? We have Immolate. Good talk. Good talk. we just headbutt to immolate and win in some fashion. Seems things are never that simple, though. But maybe they are. Power potion could be very strong. How does an infinite deal with the heart with the two damage per card and 200 cap limits? Against the heart, we can make it work by alternating Pommel Strike and Shrug It Off, um, such that we are block positive with each loop and dealing damage with each loop. So we can do this any number of times. Shrug Pommel is probably also sufficient for Time Eater, as we can play six Shrugs and six Pommel Strikes. Block 60, deal 60. That's enough to win each turn. That's only after we get set up, though, which is the harder part. I don't have a guide on how to infinite, but that does seem like it could be a helpful thing. Here's the cards you can use. Here's why it's good. Here's what to look out for.
Here's your spiker solution. That sort of stuff. Keep giving me days, they're helpful. Days for days. Good enough. Dupe pot can be pretty strong. I'll take a dupe pot over distilled chaos here. I think that could really help with an elite in particular. Oh, hello. Tempting time to take 999 gold, but uh, I don't think so. It's a boss fight and a rare relic does sound pretty good. Upgrading everything is a little overkill. All our important stuff is upgraded anyway, for the most part. We have too many, yeah, too many things we need to remove. Um, and one of the rare relics we could get would be the Peace Pipe, which would be a game changer for us. Do I think infinite is more consistent than a barricade body slam deck? All depends on the infinite deck and the barricade body slam deck. You build the things that uh, are offered to you. We haven't seen barricade this run to my knowledge. So in this run, infinite's going to be more consistent than something that doesn't exist, right? You can talk at length all you want about what's better, quote-unquote, in general, but truth is, there's no such thing as a general Slay the Spire run. You're in a specific run with specific circumstances each and every time. Talking about some hypothetical neutral state is totally worthless. Take that, Exa-nerd. It's nice to have five energy in a fight, though. I just realized that. Definitely don't need to go infinite in this fight, though. Just need to get some health back from Reaper here. Please drop a Burning Pact. Thank you and good night. Oh, Tori Tungsten Rod, that's awesome. But does it help us get closer to a win con? Not necessarily. It merely buys us time in the all-important heart fight, which is it's pretty valuable, actually. This means that any attack less than five damage does zero damage, including the heart's multi-attacks. Total immunity to the first two multi-attacks from the heart. And if we time our disarm, we can do better than that, even. That's pretty sweet. It's true, buying time is very important for this deck. That I will admit to. Am I even going to this shop? Currently I can afford the double remove. Let's do it. Oh my. Okay, now we're starting to talk. I can do a card remove and an on-sale offering, or I can buy the Abacus. Every time you shuffle the draw pile, gain six block, says the Abacus. That would let us avoid having to do Shrug Pommel. We could just do Pommel Pommel for the heart. Although I don't actually think we need it. Interesting. Power through is also kind of insane here. Although it doesn't help us get to an infinite. It, it helps us block like crazy. That said, I'm not sure I'm taking this... 
Abacus. The Order of Rod and Tory matter? No, it does not. It has the same effect either way. The um, Tory always applies first. <laughs> Baylorbot says Baylor will pick the Abacus. Oh, oh no. <laughs> will he, though? Will he? That's right, Offering will deal 5 to us. Also note that Offering and its ilk are not attacks, so Tori could not possibly affect this no matter what. Tori only affects attack damage. And I want more card wards. This path is bad. do much bigger and better things now. I didn't play the Evolve, huh? I did not. I'm concerned we might get surprise slapped at some point here. Love that. More angers is better here for sure. Only one more turn. Which hopefully won't be too bad. We'll see. It's arguably grounds for the dupe pot here. We're doing 2048, which would leave 42 damage, depending on what we draw into here. Well, I could draw into a bunch of angers. We'll see. Trust in the dreidel. Never mind. Bash is the top card, so we can do Bash to save some health, or we can just take our 30-something damage, I guess. My face. We've got Reaper, we can heal it back. Not too surprised that that guy hit us hard. I'm just glad we're not fighting Reptomancer. I feel pretty safe in this fight. Just start whittling the enemy down. 45, no prob. I've got armaments impervious for you, friends. Take that. The 
don't need to play this. I'm really happy with Reaper this turn. Burns are just fodder for the second win, for the most part. Although, this can happen. And pummel strike. Yikes. Definitely not what we meant to draw here. Uh, although we do take very little, actually. Actually, we take zero. I forgot about that. Never mind. Nothing to be afraid of. Your face. Play offering here. That feels better. Okay, we're out of that fight. We scored ourselves an Akabeko Sever Soul. Can get rid of non attack cards, which is sort of helpful. I think any port in a storm here. Akabeka with uh, Reaper is actually awesome, now that, now that I think about it. I'm sorry for what I'm about to do to my own deck. Good talk. Bad talk. Oh no. If I strike it, I might take immense damage. If I don't strike it, I'm going to get a curse. really can't afford the curse, so I just have to risk it here. Okay, that's pretty low as far as damage goes. I'll take that. Could have been much worse. Could have been like 50. Yeah, 52. That's not good. Life's not good. Why is life so difficult? We block 28 plus 12, take 12? Or I headbutt pummel strike. We take probably more than that. Hmm. Well, with disarm, it can't be that bad, right? Much better. Okay. Get the debuffs extended, but that's fine. Still fine. Still chipping away at me, though. Not good. God. Help. Do you have a rest site coming up? Okay. I'm okay with that. Alright. I think we have control over this for the moment. We'll be able to get some of our health back, I, I believe, if I do this correctly. I 
Only if I do it correctly, though. Dude is really rude today. What is your problem, sir? Give me the Reaper, come on. Okay, guaranteed Reaper with Bull next turn will heal six. Acceptable. Go back to 32. Upgraded Feel No Pain. Not sure about that. Buys us more time, but slows us down further. I have to open this chest to get the blue key, so we get another curse. Bummer. We do get an upgrade, though. So we can upgrade one of our Feel No Pains. Or the Evolve. Let's upgrade the Evolve. That will help a lot in the Time Eater fight. Then we have to open this. We get a Pain, which is fine. And the Sapphire Key. And I'm going to have a Snooze, I think. No. <laughs> oh, no. Mistakes have been made. We can buy another True Grit, though. That's probably still worth it. Yeah, and the Fiend Fire, too. No, I'll just buy True Grit. Like I said, any port in a storm. This will be sufficient, I think. I hope. I pray. How do you feel about Giant Head? Giant Head could definitely go badly. Repto could be a lot of healing. Remove Curse Event would be so good. I think we should maybe take the events here. Should be okay in the boss fights. Glowing Tesseract could really help. What do you got? Dark Shackles, Panic Button. Secret weapon's okay. Purity. Exhaust up to three cards in your hand. I like all of those. I'm gonna recall here. Let's take one more event. It's a fight. Show me Reaper early. Please and thank you. Nice. It's only going to heal for 24, because we can't heal off the Spheric Guardian, but it's still 24 healing, which is amazing. Thank you, Akabeka. Aki Becky. Cute. I'm immune to pain. Also immune to having no cards in my hand. The Orochi Man, thanks for four months, third of a year down. I still don't think we need Rage, where we're headed. Because we have the Shrug. None of these exhaust stuff. 
So what I'm going to do is upgrade our True Grit. And let's see how we do. I think we're going to be okay here in these boss fights. Though it could take us a little while to get set up. I actually really like Secret Weapon. I didn't realize how good it was at first, but now I've, I've come to realize it's actually really good. Because it can fetch um, Sever Soul, hilariously. This is a very good second win, that said. Let's True Grit the Anger. Secret Weapon... I guess I can Secret Weapon for Reaper here, get some more health. No, I discarded Reaper. So we can go Armaments, Second Wind. Good. Tipper Soul deals 22. Doesn't feel like it's worth playing, though. What's with all the curses? <laughs> Unfortunately, I've determined this is how we're winning the run. I'd say it was a good plan. Stop hurting me. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh yes. All of this. Uh oh. Made a mistake though. So that I can only play one more card and I need to play two more. Could use the dupe pot now. I don't love that. I really want that for later. Or we can take a bunch of damage next turn. Neither option is appealing. Let's put the nasty attack, too. Okay, so we should use a Dupot here, unfortunately. Otherwise, this is really way too scary. Here. We block for six times eight, which is not quite a full block, no notably. Uh, I can trigger the strike as the last action. That'll block a bit more.
foolish. Okay, with the debuff into a multi-attack, we could face quite a lot of damage. I'm actually not sure what to do if that happens. Looks like we have to survive one more turn here, at least. Oh, shoot. That's bad. Hmm. We'll have the second wind at the very end, huh? And that's going to increase to 28 by 3 or something. I think we can block for 70-something. Second wind. Full blocks. Thanks to Tungsten Rod Tori. And then we can win before we have to do that again. So that's how an infinite can beat Time Eater. As an example. Should we just win now? Okay, that was good. Don't like that we had to use our potion, as we probably can't buy another one now. But uh, it is what it is. This fight is definitely much easier to go infinite in. Pro tip. Excellent turn. So let's secret weapon for anger. Use true grit to delete anger. Use second wind to delete my entire hand. Wrong with unceasing top. Cool. Going to need evolve in this fight. And I don't want to make the bird any angrier than they already are. Get a previous turn. Great dark shackles turn. Don't need the shrug in this fight. That Silver Soul was actually good. Good Silver Soul. Look at this. Five turns, and we're here. That's actually really good. If we can do this in five turns against Heart, I think we win. I'm really worried about Shield and Spear, though. We're not that good at that fight. We don't do enough front-loaded damage, and they will kill us really fast. So I have no freaking clue what we do there. Lock motive. How's it going? Two hours later. Can't really control whether the sundial is set up. That's not quite true. I can finish with the delay. Okay, sundial on two, ink bottle on nine. Although, that's right, it's not quite the end of the fight yet. Cool. 
Move another turn. Yeah, Evolve on turn one against Shield and Spear could help a lot. We only get to look at 15 cards out of 35, though. So we have no assurance that Evolve will be on top, unfortunately. Oh. set up. I don't think I get much of a choice, huh? No, this is how it is. Alright. We're on to Act 4. I am a little nervous here, Twitch chat. I don't think this got quite good enough. We didn't get that Dark Embrace, which would have been really crucial to making this a bit more explosive. And we had to use a potion. Both of these things make me a little uncomfortable. I guess I'll upgrade a Feel No Pain. There can be a Dark Embrace and the Power Potion all there wants. I really wish we could afford the second Power Pot. Uh, the question is, which fight do we need it for, I suppose? Janez, thanks for the 19 months. Let's go. I have no Weaken in this deck. Definitely worried about... The one two whammy here. Let's see what our turn one at least looks like. We got Evolve. Okay, we got Evolve, Feel No Pain, and an Offering turn one. This has got to be pretty reasonable, actually. Let's discard everything except these three. This gives me hope we can do this without the Power Potion. We can even Reaper after playing Offering here. So I think we go Armaments, Evolve, Feel No Pain, Offering. See what happens from there. Were there ever rewards after Act 3 going into Heart? No. There has never been rewards at that point. Used to be the end of the game. So there was no need to reward the player for winning. Okay, goodish turn. Okay, looks like we can play Reaper to go to full health, and then... Probably don't want a second win, because I've got True Grit. So we can Purity, Pain, and Defend. Disarm doesn't do really anything here, but it does remove an artifact layer to make Dark Shackles potentially work next turn. I realize we're about to draw one card. That could be awkward. Secret weapon. So I can just seek anger here. Um. Or I can seek carnage and get rid of it. Let's do that. We get two burns directly on top, but that'll actually increase our draw. We got Sever Soul to get rid of all this garbage, too. Excellent. Let's go Impervious Offering here. Still no pain. Let's pummel you for a minute. Delete everything, delete everything. I suppose we stay facing this way then. Don't play anger. Next turn could be really bad, depending on what we draw. Definitely worried about this one. I see a basic defend and a basic headbutt here. Not a good recipe for generating a lot of block, but uh, this works out okay. Second win gets rid of Armaments, Defend, and Flame. 
can even headbutt Pummel Strike and draw more first. Let's do that. Headbutt Pummel, keep drawing. Excellent, okay. True Grit the Strike, Second Wind, everything else. Now we're close. This is no good, though. This stings a little bit. Nothing we can't handle, but I don't love it. We're taking seven currently. Don't think I want to play Anger. there. Draw Pummel Strike too. So let's go trigger it on Bash. Second Wind. Burns are okay at the moment. We go to forty one, we take six. So, second wind is the only way to full block, but I'm worried that next turn we can't full block if I do that. Still too many cards here. Let's see, we'd have five, nine. Nine is too many. Okay, in that case, we want to do this. Take some. So we can draw more with Evolve. We actually need the burns to provide the bonus draw. Don't like that we're dropping lower in health, though. There we go. Now we're there. Nine gang, rise up. Okay, we kept the potion for the heart. That's really encouraging. This barricade or feel no pain or dark embrace could all make a big difference here. We do want to set up the the uh, sundial for sure. Corruption could also help. Actually, I think corruption would be bad because we need the shrug as part of our block infinite. Mom, he's cheating. Good enough. Pantograph, we're at full health. There's fire breathing. I don't think fire breathing helps, though. We're getting rid of all the statuses and curses. But Pantograph is excellent. We get full health plus the potion. We have an actual chance here at Twitch chat. We'll take fire breathing off the potion, maybe. Keep these cards, play the True Grit, uh, play the Feel No Pain, delete this strike, discard all this. And we get Evolve turn one. This is a very encouraging turn one, let's say. Could maybe decide to wait on the potion till we find armaments, but we're mostly looking for Barricade or Dark Embrace, which don't care. What do you got? Barricade. I don't think we take this corruption, as aforementioned, because the corruption will cause our shrug it off to get deleted, and we need shrug pummel strike to be the combo that wins. What about the brutality? Draw one more card each turn. Does help a little bit, actually. Brutality isn't useless. But I think uh, the barricade will allow us to 
accumulate enough block, it will be fine. I think Barricade is, is the better pick here. Oh, and we got Purity turn one also. We can get rid of some good stuff. I'm gonna take Beat of Death damage because we can retain all block and we take one less damage per card. We wanna play the powers first, then the block cards. Now my face. Good, we get rid of the shame with the second wind as well. And I can play the inflame, which we'll also get rid of. Okay, we burn no prob. We get 22 block that we retain. It's the big hit first, followed by the multi-hit, that's great. So all of this 22 block will be helpful here. This is looking really good. Just delete as much as possible here. I'm gonna true grit the headbutts. We're gonna secret weapon sever soul, and I'm gonna use sever soul to delete the hands. Which will also give me a ton of block. Don't need that stinky armament. Can't even hurt me. We could disarm to make it zero, and I might as well, because we're retaining block here. I have to activate Sundial. Second wind. Excellent. I think this is in the bag, Twishat. The bag of preparation. That way we draw exactly... No, there's still one more. Okay. Now there's only exactly five cards. We draw exactly all of these five cards. No risk. We're completely 100% secure in our victory. GG. What a tough run this was. Uh, it seemed like it was very, very strong at the beginning, but we started to limp towards the end as we figured out how to get our win condition to work, despite <clears throat> three different curses in the deck, which arguably stood in our way majorly here. I'm not sure that I would have felt comfortable trying to employ this kind of win condition without the experience of the Mastery Challenge, where we tried to win with two copies of all the curses in our deck, 
across different runs, so I had a lot of experience managing curses and still figuring out a working deck. It's pretty sweet. Did Barricade even help? Barricade... Definitely means we're leaving the fight with more hit points. I think. It helped us block the turn 2 hit. And I don't know if we would have had enough block for turn 4 without the Barricade. And again, the secret to making this work is that Sundial shuffles not once, but twice when Pommel Strike is played. Um, for honestly unknown reasons. It just considers that to be a double shuffle, which shouldn't even be a thing. Mostly, the game gets very confused when you try to draw two cards, but there's only one card left to actually draw. Stop hitting yourself, Mr. Hart. GG. GG. Set the streak to seven. That was a great first run. Not too bad. 20 cards off the top, 58 cards off the bottle. I'll take it. GG. Felt like a just strong enough run, definitely. Definitely, we were just fast enough to get infinite in all the fights that really mattered. The shield and spear fight, the bronze automaton fight, which could have killed us. The heart fight. I agree, 039. We could have died in Shield and Spear if we if we just bricked one draw. That's all it would have taken, is one one disaster draw, and it's all over. If we didn't get Evolve on turn one, followed by Wound, wound uh, Burn, Burn, Strike, Defend, Ascender's Bane on turn two, and it's all over. Time Eater also almost got us. That was close. I think Time Eater with a bad draw order and an evil attack pattern could have done something similar. But we didn't face those things. We made it through all the way to the end, and now we've got a 7 streak on our record. I'll take it. The transient fight also went really badly. We took a lot of damage for basically no reason. 49 damage to transient. I wonder if I just played the inflame, if that would have gone a bit better. I decided to delete inflame in that fight, and I think that was unwise. Then we ended up okay. We didn't even need the rest that we used. Easy peasy. We rested in Act 4, or Act 3 rather. We rested before Bronze Automaton. We did not rest in Act 1 though. That's right, we went to Hexaghost with full health. This really changed, though, right? Could, the way the deck was at the start of the Hexagos fight, you would have thought the entire run would have been free, but um, we ran into some troubles. I do wonder what Astrolabe would have given us. Is a 20 streak on defect even possible? It's not, <clears throat> it's not easy, that's for sure. So far, nobody's done it, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. It's unclear if the, the Sundial's method of accounting is uh, intended or a glitch. Either way, it never got fixed. I'd say the difference between um, the double count on Sundial and something like Pandora's Box is that you have to go out of your, you know, removing all your cards with Pandora's Box. You have to go out of your way to 
utilize the, the Pandora's box glitch. You have to perform a specific action. Whereas with the, the sundial, you can't really avoid it. Like If you have a sundial and you have card draw, then that interaction can occur. You can't really control whether it's happening or not. Kind of like uh, badge boost shenanigans in the first... Um, in the in Pokemon Red and Blue, if anyone knows what I'm talking about, um, every time your stats change in that game via any effect, your badge boosts are reapplied, which causes your stats to be recalculated often incorrectly. If you change your stats a lot on purpose, you can abuse this, but you can also benefit from it if the opponent simply uses Growl on you then your badge boosts will reapply, and you're benefiting from a bug that you can't avoid. And yeah, red-blue is, is full of glitch, absolutely full of glitches um, from top to bottom. So it's a, a kind of a fun game to, to compare to, I guess, in this regard, because there isn't really such a thing as a glitchless run of Pokemon Red or Blue, although I saw somebody try as a meme, which was pretty funny. It's like, you weren't allowed to Gen 1 miss. If you Gen 1 miss, the run was over. You have to restart. You're not allowed to get randomly stat changed. You're not allowed to... Um, you're not allowed to be on low health for any reason, because the red bar music is glitchy. You just have to, like, perfectly route the game to not encounter any time-saving or beneficial glitches. I do believe that, yes, red-blue can do arbitrary code execution. I think this was done, this was showcased at one year's GDQ with the task bot, if I remember correctly. Yes, Bruno Santos, the win rate command, uh, you can specify the dates. So if you just look at... Uh... And 2022 was actually our challenge year, so just the win rate 2020. To 2022. We can see what I won when I, when I was trying hard. Those were my win rates. That was for our 100 wins with each character challenge. 60% overall. 65 on the Ironclad. 73% on the Watcher. And then if you compare win rate 2023, 2023. Yeah, I dropped a full 10% because of the challenge. Oh yeah, and just, just the year works too. Cool. Definitely warped by the Mastery Challenge, no question. We even abandoned some runs because of the Mastery Challenge. Couple useful applications. You can definitely wrong warp to the uh, credits room. Well, Twitch chat, I'm very pleased with this run. Let's do one more here. Before that happens, though, I'm going to take a quick break, refill my legs, stretch my water. In five or so minutes, I will return, and we're going to play another clad run, seeing uh, if we can keep it up. Back in a bit, everybody. Please don't go nowhere.
All right, Twitch chat, we have returned. And I am looking forward to another clad run here. Let's see what uh, Niao offers us today. As we embark upon our second journey of the stream. Another try? Yes, indeed. Hmm. Very interesting options. Pretty interesting act, too. Overall, I like it. So, Rare Colors card trades some max health to get an option that could be pretty strong here. Apotheosis and Master Strategy and Hand of Greed are all very good cards to begin a run with. Could also remove a card. That's passable. Get three potions. That's okay if there's an early elite threat, but we're not really threatened that much. As far as overall pathing, I like a couple options here. You want a fire before the first elite, definitely. You can actually get three more fires before a burning elite. Late in the act is easy to get. Or if we want to, we can also get three elites going this way. Um, that would require an early shop, though, which is not always worth it. If we got Hand of Greed, Yellow Path is much better. Hey there, Jankoviak. Are we flexible enough here to consider a boss swap? We can go, yeah, four fires into first elite. We could consider boss swap here, definitely. I like boss swap a bit more going into guardian, perhaps, too. So I think in ironclad, it's it's really all about whether your deck wins or not. Not about how many hit points you have for guardian. Mods are only on uh, Steam PC for, for Slay the Spire. Generally, consoles can't mod, unfortunately. I think I am leaning towards Colorless Guard. Strong upside for a lose max health downside is almost always a good start in Spire. And the rare Colorless Pool is pretty good. And you can get them on uh, Macintosh, too. Apple PC, Apple computer can do mods. This is great through the workshop. How do I determine my choice, says Mr. Binary? I like to think of my starting bonus and my pack path in Act 1 as chosen, chosen in conjunction. I'm looking for a bonus that gives me a head start on power and will allow me to tackle the threats that are coming up on the path that I've chosen. Some benefits are immediate upsides, like gaining potions. Others are more long-term. Card removes are better long-term than they are immediately. Um, same for money. Some relics upsides can also be long-term rather than immediate. Um, whereas the depending on how many elites you're facing in Act 1, you may need a bonus that gives you a leg up in those fights instead. And that's, I think, where this rare colorless card comes in. We're offered both Apotheosis and Master of Strategy. So we have a choice to make. Which one do we take? I'm pretty happy with Apo early, usually. It means you can add lots of cards to the deck, and for the price of just one one-cost skill after upgrading, everything is plus. Very strong card in the early game. And can be very useful later game, too. I like it on Ironclad with Corruption, also. Hey there, Gunter Barzival. Thanks for 35 months. How's it going, Mr. Quackums? You heard correctly. I uh, I dug through my run history after Chegg messaged me and looked for defect runs that I had over a year ago that had interesting criteria to them. And uh, selected a couple of seeds that got used in the competition.
Makes Fusion Hammer free is one of my favorite parts of uh, Apo, and could support an early String Blow take, which would be pretty cool. Although I think with Apotheosis we go Yellow Path for sure here. We'll upgrade Apo before the Elite. If we don't have potions, we'll buy a potion. Otherwise, we'll do something else. Who knows exactly what we'll do. I'm gonna get slapped in the face by lice, is what we'll do. Hey, Despress Express. I get a lot of conf compliments on the voice, and I'm always glad to hear them. Asuki with seven months. Apotheosis upgraded your substreak. Impressive. Only down one hit point, that's not too bad. We do get a potion, <clears throat> and we also get Thunderclap, Perfected Strike, or Twin Strike. I'm definitely a Twin Strike on Floor 1 Believer. Pretty good with an upgrade, dealing 14 damage to one enemy. Would Dark Bailer's favorite card be? It would be Claw. Definitely. Even the cats are enjoying the stream. Good stuff. I don't think I would take Perfected Strike here. After we take Twin Strike, Perfected Strike can be a bit better. Okay, we can buy some potions. That's part of the role of the shop, is to give us good potions. So let's get them on the cheap here. If I spend 30 gold, I'm left with 82. That's enough to still buy a remove at the shop, which is what I want. Hmm. Which one do I take, though? Let's go with both. <laughs> Double liquid memories will make that first elite no problem here. And I think that means we can click a few times to get a relic from this event, the Scrap Ooze. I'm willing to click three times here, maybe four, before we abandon this endeavor. Usually you get it in the first three clicks. Click one. Ouch. Click two. Ouch. Click three. Success. We get a gremlin horn, and that was well worth it. Now, when an enemy dies, we'll gain an energy and draw a card, and that immediately makes a lot of things in the game less threatening, very notably the elites of Act 2. Or the five slimes encounter in Act 1. How about? Hmm. Do I get to play Apotheosis? I don't think so. Well, let's see, if I Apo defend, that's better than any other line here? Okay, I guess we do. And then Twin Strike and Strike will kill. Or Three Strikes will kill. So we're up a little bit of health in this fight. Take another Twin Strike. It's boring, but it's fine. Bash for 12? Hmm, I definitely missed a lethal there, apparently. Oh yeah, we drew Bash Strike when it was already vulnerable, huh? Yeah, I missed that. I think I might have been very surprised that I just redrew Bash on two consecutive turns. That doesn't even seem like it's possible normally. Twin, twin strike. <clears throat> and then a spot weakness for strength. Perfect. Um, spot weakness is one of the better strength gaining cards, and it's got a nice layer of safety with two liquid memories too. Even if we whiff it, we can get it back. It's gonna scale our damage exceedingly well. So there's very little chance I would say no here. Unfortunately, that means we also cannot afford a remove or a shrug or anything else here in the shop. We have 51 gold left over. Panktorilla, thanks for the prime sub of the seven months. 
You've already watched every run in seven months? Terrifying. I've been doing this for five years. Okay, our first elite is Gremlin Om. Thanks to the liquid memories, I don't expect too much trouble here. So we'll just consider how to use these potions to deal maximum damage. And it looks like we might not even need to. Let's see, we can do Spot Weakness into Bash this turn. That would do 11 damage. This goes to 57. Does this do 57 with 3 strength? The strikes are 13, this should be 24. 13 plus 13, it's 24, 50. So that's a no, we're just shy. But if I use one Liquid Memories, we can do it. Does that mean we can maybe do a better line? What if, if I have to use the Liquid Memories anyway, What if I don't play the spot weakness? 60. This is 14. Or I could do Apotheosis, Twin Strike, Liquid Memories, Twin Strike, Strike. That would be 20, 20, 13. That's not enough either. What about Bash Strike? We'll do all 17, so they go to 51. Next turn, yes, Liquid Memories. Okay, so. We could play the Spot Weakness this turn, gain three points of strength. That'll cause the Gremlin Knob to do three additional damage. Get hit for 11 this turn. Since we have to use a Liquid Memories next turn either way, we can unoptimize our damage a little bit to save the three health from the Gremlin Ob attacking us. So the line I'm going to do is the following. Bash Strike on this turn. Next turn, Apotheosis, Twin Strike, Liquid Memories, Twin Strike, Strike. That should kill. Let me just double check that. So next turn we deal 7 goes to 10 twice. So 20... 20. This will be 13. This turn we deal 17. Yeah, 70 total. It has 68 health. So we get the kill, and we don't take the three additional damage that we would take from playing the spot weakness. Little optimization like that is definitely worth finding. Why would strike be 13? Because it's a strike plus. That's why. Do we want a Corruption? I'm going to say yes we do. Especially with a letter opener, which says, for three skills played in one turn, we'll deal five damage to all enemies. That said, this Perfected Strike does hit quite a bit harder now that we have two Twin Strikes in the deck. Corruption's also not that good against Guardian, but seems ridiculous to not take it. take that Corruption. Corruption too good with Apotheosis, right? We can Apotheosis, then Corruption, or Corruption, then Apotheosis. Either way, it's a good time, except when Jaw Worm kills you on turn one. What the heck? Ow. Another spot weakness is interesting. I kind of like it. Pummel to go with the one spot we have is good, but double spot weakness is more consistent and more top end scaling with the corruption, too. Migo Black, thanks for the Prime sub in the three months. Grab it. And yeah, more skills with corruption has surely got to be good, right? 
So either we have Corruption Apotheosis going into Lagavulin here, which will be free, or we have Gremlin Horn Letter Opener going into Sentries, which will also be free. I think we're very good at the elite fights here. Oh, <laughs> and we have a Bottled Apotheosis. Excellent. All right, so now every card in the deck is upgraded all of the time. No upgrades matter ever again because we will always be able to play this before everything else. So that means we can recall in Act 1. We can rest at every fire, and we can still play with every card ever upgraded. Very exciting. Arr gets Blarg. Thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Also, I'm going to do something funny, which is play the Bash and then the Apotheosis. Optimal. Pretty good damage, but I want the Corruption down. Now wake up. Potion would only save four here, not worth using. Not the smoothest fight, but definitely pretty good. We get a Singing Bowl, allowing us to skip cards to gain max HP. But will I take a Second Wind instead? Think about it. Perfected Strike is again back. Maybe I want that Perfected Strike. That does do a lot of damage. Don't think I would want dual wield here. Although dual wield with corruption can do fun things. It's our block strat for guardian. Just four upgraded defense is all we have so far. That won't be sufficient. Unfortunately, second wind does not improve the situation. Perfected strike will be a good matchup in case the perfect um, the spot weakness is whiff. It's also good to help get Guardian transformed. I'm gonna take it. I think it's worth it here. <laughs> this is not worth it though. Upgrade two random cards. Guess what? The full deck is upgraded. Be gone. Likewise, for safety here, I'm gonna rest before the Burning Elite because there's no upgrade that actually matters. Plus strength sentries, huh? Hmm. Tempting to just perfected strike then. Chunk one down quickly. Especially with the Gremlin Horn. We should do that. Yeah, we need Searing Blow, something to upgrade. Otherwise, what is even the point, am I right? But my face, though. Thirty-eight. Quite a swipe. Question card is excellent, although kind of an anti-synergy with a singing bowl here. Now we have more options from card rewards. Sentinel is another block card for the Guardian, and it's corruption fuel, so I kind of like it here. I guess we might as well, huh? I'm not taking Blood for Blood or Thunderclap.
Hmm. This fight's not cute. So we always apotheosis. So it's a question of we defend strike or do we perfect the strike and almost kill the acid slime here? I guess I could chunk down this guy too. Could use the liquid memories here, but I'm definitely going to be saving that for the boss fight. We get to do the acid slime first. Let's do it this way. Yeah, I was kind of afraid of that. Ow. Now is a reasonable time to use this speed potion for 5 HP. We have 60% chance to get a potion, too, right? Yeah, let's use the speed pot here. These guys are rude. Ghostly armor will also help with the guardian quite a bit. Didn't get a potion, by the way. I think ghostly armor plus resting plus having a fully upgraded deck should be enough for the guardian here. The spot weaknesses will churn out consistent strength gain for us here. The guardian spends most of their time attacking. For example, this turn we can spot weakness double twin strike, and that's an excellent start here. Not planning on playing Corruption, at least not yet. So we're gonna need the blocks for blocking. Our blocks are in fact so good at blocking that we can often just chip in with some extra attack damage here. Which will definitely contribute to this boss's demise. If you exhume Apotheosis and play it again, does Searing Blow get upgraded a second time? Yes. Yes it does. And with 8 strength now, this fight shouldn't be long. But I will allow the attack intent next turn. We're guaranteed to get enough damage to transform. I might be able to sneak corruption into play at this time. Or otherwise we can just do spot weakness into the big slap. Now we can play corruption. Yeah, now we can play Corruption. Go defend Corruption. Because by the time we get through the deck again, this boss will be dead. GG. All right, we get our Corruption, we get a Regen Potion, we can get a Limit Break with two Spot Weaknesses, or an Immolate with a Gremlin Horn, and an Apotheosis, that's probably the winner, or a Fiend Fire to get rid of stuff. We don't have an AoE card yet, Immolate is often the premium AoE here, and I love it with Gremlin Horn. I'll take it. Ooh, and it's even better with a Snekowai. Wait, we have Snekowai, Apotheosis, Corruption, Immolate. Yes. There's also Pandora's Box, which transforms all of our strikes and defends. All of those become upgraded cards. That's also very powerful. Or Slaver's Collar for more energy during boss and elite combats. I often say that just Corruption alone is breaking the Snekowai, usually. It's a three cost card that becomes cheaper on average, and then it makes every other card in the deck free, practically, which is spectacular. 
really likes Neko Eye here. Great with the Bash Perfected Strike and Immolate, too. This is a very good Sneko Eye. It does mean our Apotheosis will be random cost, which could be a bit of a downside sometimes, but I think on average it's going to be a huge net gain. Let's do it. Let's do it. I do wonder what was in the box, but I'm taking the Sneko Eye. I have no fear. Is a three elite path. No fires, but uh, who needs fires? We just do this? I think we can. Just like completely mess around. Does Apotheosis lower the cards of Snekoed cards to their upgraded value? Yes, unless they were already zero cost. In which case they stay zero cost. Time for Heavy Blade. Time for the Shelled Parasite to get hecked. Hmm. Is this lethal? With the uh, Liquid Memories, yes. We have a kill here. Just have to do the following. And I think this is worth the Liquid Memories here. Let's go Bash. Strike. Twin Strike. Immolate. Liquid Memories. Immolate. Click. Now we have a Dark Embrace. Ho, ho, ho. Excellent card with a Corruption, of course. Strange Spoon Sneko Eye Corruption. Now there's an interesting idea. So Strange Spoon says cards that exhaust when played, cards that exhaust when played instead discard half the time. So that means that, well, Apotheosis can be discarded. That's kind of awkward. But it means that with Corruption in play, all of our skills will be free. Sometimes they won't exhaust. With the Dark Embrace, you kind of want them exhausting, though. And it, yeah, it definitely adds some RNG to the run that we don't necessarily need. With Corruption, Chrysalis can be very good, putting three random skills in the draw pile. Uh, I'm perfectly happy to remove a card here, though. Looks like we'll have plenty of chance to get more potions, so I don't think I'm going to buy a potion. Let's lose one of these stinky strikes, hey? Even with the Perfect Strike, we don't want five of those. Clothesline might be making the bare minimum here to be worth including. But I'm pretty sure we can just pick a Clothesline from a card reward, if we care for one. So I don't feel like it's a good use of money to buy either Clothesline or a Potion here. I think we're fine. Bird Nerds! Prepare thy butts. We really want a flame barrier now. Hmm, can't quite kill you, huh? 15, 6. Hmm. Do this though. Perfect. Perfected Strike Plus. Let's do it. Why not? 
It's going to hit pretty hard, actually. And improves the damage of the other one. I guess the plus doesn't matter. It's just another perfected strike. Maybe I want Whirlwind? Whirlwind with double spot weakness and Sentinel seems way better, actually. Way better. Embrace, save me. Dark Embrace did not save me. No. Okay, one potion acquired. Another spot weakness. True Grid is also here for some block. Looks like block is lacking. Unless I really do want three spot weaknesses. It's kind of badass, honestly. But if the enemy's not attacking us, that could be really, really terrible to have three of these. Let's take a true grit. Let's take a true grit. Plus eight, twenty one, take three. Fifty percent chance of a potion from this fight. Let's just top up, top off with regen potion for the elite fight here. Top up, whatever you want to call it. Give it top performance. Tippy top. Hmm. Guess I'm not healing the rest of this, though. Wait, yes, we are. Oh my. Exhum can return any card corruption is exhausted. Or shrug. No such thing as too many shrugs when you have a corruption. Zoom definitely has much bigger potential, that's for sure. Give me that. Also, it could be two exhausts for the price of one card, so it draws even more. Here's a slight problem. Apotheosis, three cost. I guess with a Blessing of the Forge potion, this is arguably one fight where we don't need to play the Apotheosis the first time we see it. Let's get Dark Embrace in play. Then just defend strike. I suppose that's fine. Won't be long until we see corruption. Or will it? Wow, what a bad turn, huh? Ouch. Oh dear. Oh no. Well, that's not good. Maybe go Forge Pot here, Spot Weakness, Defend, and Bash? Definitely want to get Bash down. I have more Elites coming, too. What if my health goes down, though? Maybe wanted to True Grit the Sentinel, actually. Probably did want to do that. Wow. That is a truly garbage draw, unfortunately, for us. Um, 
Okay, we're gonna go here then. Definitely a little sketchy, but worked out. We get a white bee statue and a heart of iron. These things will help us recover quite a bit and a feel no pain to go with the whole corruption thing. I think we're in pretty good shape, despite that one ugly fight. We're just going to change our pathing slightly now because I want to heal. So we'll take one less elite, but otherwise we'll be in pretty good shape here, I think. Duplicate a card in your deck. Hmm. Double Feel No Pain? Could go double Dark Embrace. Double Dark Embrace seems safer, right? Yeah, let's do that. More card draw with everything costing zero. And Blood Vial is a little bit of healing. Not amazing, but definitely a little bit. More than we have currently. I grab it. That could have just as easily been a skip though, that's for sure. Could have been reasonably fine either way. Finally, we get a turn one worthy of the name. Boom. This is what it's all about. Aya! No healing, right? That's right, we have no healing. Excellent fight. We do have the White Bee statue, that's right. So we should be using a potion each combat. Entrench. Interesting. We're not unlikely to get a barricade after Bronze Automaton, and this would break the game wide open if I do. I'm gonna grab it here. Sort of an insurance policy, you can call it. It's not bad with the corruption even um, otherwise, just for the record. I'm going to avoid this rest site. Again, rest sites offer nothing useful to us because we have bottled apotheosis. Hmm, apparitions. Go down to 34 max health, gain intangibility three times per fight. Not usually a fan of apparitions with Snekowai. This deck does like them quite a bit with the corruption, but I don't trust them. If we get the corruption early enough, it's fine, but sometimes we draw them at three cost. We can't play them. We do have Exhum, which makes it quite a bit better. But Exhum is, is so broadly useful, I don't need it to get another turn here. I guess I will take a Relic and six max health here. That looks pretty reasonable. Thanks to Darkstone Periapt. Starting to see when I should maybe consider taking this a bit more. Get a Nunchaku for a bit more energy, and we get some more back south. I will take one more event here. It's a fight. Fine by me. A bonk.
Would I take an energy relic or sacred bark here? I think I would prefer an energy relic just to get the powers in play more easily. I'd be pretty happy with sacred bark though. I'm gonna be honest. Be quite happy with sacred bark. Double Heart of Iron is kind of cool. Juggernaut. This is the deck that wants Juggernaut. Definitely. Every time we gain block, this is going to deal 7 damage to a random enemy. And it's great with Double Heart of Iron, too. Although I might want Liquid Memories. And one Heart of Iron here. Double Heart of Iron is only defensive. Liquid Memories can be offensive. We have yet to skip a card. It's true. It's true. There's a reason I said Singing Bowl was bad with the question card, because with the question card, you're taking cards all the time. All the time, every time. Order. Maybe I wanted to use the Heart of Iron? Probably not. Double do. Glorious. Body slam is here. I don't think it's that good, though. Finally, we take some max health, I think. That's the conclusion. All right, Mr. Automaton. Prepare to be boarded for something. What exactly happened in that last fight? The answer is Feel No Pain, Corruption, Juggernaut, Dark Embrace. All together is ludicrous. It's the short answer. It's ludicrous. You get to deal ludicrous damage. I'm not going to bother immolating, am I? I'm not. Taking rare cards. Corruption and Juggernaut are getting taken. I don't like that. Do not like that. Okay, there's the jug. There's the corruption. Can't play them both though, unless I uh, liquid memories here, which might be worth doing. Just to get everything in play here. Let's yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I play corruption, I play juggernaut, we block. Each time we block, we deal seven damage to the boss. And we're going to block quite a bit. I was worried about this, though. That's not good. Spin to win. GG. 
second Juggernaut or a Reaper. Reaper is very powerful here. We can exhume it, and we have a lot of max health. I'd say that says take a Reaper. But uh, second Juggernaut does do a ton of damage. We can get back so much health from the Reaper, though. Give me the Reaper. I think one Juggernaut is probably enough for now. And we do, in fact, get some energy here. Philo Stone, Coffee Dripper, or Cursed Key. Coffee Dripper looks like the easiest one to take here. We can no longer rest at rest sites, but we have Reaper for healing. So probably we're fine. With the Cursed Key, we'll gain more max health from the Darkstone Periapt. Um, although that's not necessarily something we want to do. We could just have less curses. That might be even better, quite frankly. So with the Coffee Dripper, we want to avoid rest sites pretty much entirely. I think we can... I think we can do just fine there. We have our Burning Elite already. Three Elites looks great. Always happy to take Elites in Act 3 when I've got Grumlin Horn, because Reptomancer is so much less threatening. Ridiculously so. Uh, and again, we're trying to avoid rest sites. This path doesn't get a shop, unfortunately, but we can maybe get a random shop. Although that would mean going there, huh? Hmm. Awkward. No, we want that early shop. We're so loaded here, so probably... I'll leave this path. Get one rest site. That's fine. The other path I see that hits no rest sites at all is this one. Looks okay. Purple, because why not? But then there's no shop here, so I don't like it very much. So I guess the question is, am I willing to, to spend two map nodes to go to a shop with 500 gold? The answer is yes. Well, that's what Reaper's for. I'll be back for my health. Or maybe I won't. If I want to use the Reaper effectively, the one thing is clear. I cannot play Juggernaut in this fight. I'll kill you now. Not to play Reaper, though. Not bad. Do that again. Amazing. So, clothesline is back. It still is the only source of weaken the deck has access to, so honestly, I'm saying good enough here. Is there a way to gain infinite money and slay the spire? Yes. You need two copies of the card Nightmare and one copy of the card Wish to get started. I'm very happy about the Reaper pick.
Shockwave, Flame Barrier, Heavy Blade are all pretty good. The only thing I'm sure we don't need is a third Dark Embrace. I guess Shockwave is pretty good. We, I mean, just the clothesline is not going to cut it. I like that, I think, more than I like the Shockwave. The Iron is pretty good. I'll take the Blood Pot, though. Blood Pot, Power Pot. Shame to have discarded both those Heart of Irons. So it goes, though. Get him, clothesline. Oops, maybe don't. This deck is very strong. Another blood potion. Glug, glug. Bloodletting seems unnecessary. Let's take some max health. Never stood a chance. Second apotheosis, anyone? I like anchor, as we're taking damage on turn one pretty often. I definitely want disarm. I don't think I want inflame. Definitely want Disarm, definitely want Anchor, definitely want to remove Writhe. Let's start with those. That means we can't afford the Art of War, can't afford the Waffle. I think that means we just save our money. Sounds good to me. Oh ho. Do weird order here. A fun turn. Sneko Oil can be very good with Sneko Eye. It's a draw five and... It can reroll the cost of the randomly costed cards in our hand. How's it going, Red Dawn? YouTube's usually around two to three months behind at this point. So the Mastery Challenge did finish back in, I believe, October. Pretty sure it was October. Take this Echo Oil. Does exhausting a strike lower the damage of perfected strike? Yes, it does. The current number of strikes is what's checked. And that means if you dual wield a strike, you will increase the damage of perfected strike. Truck's good. Demon form is cool, but couldn't find the other demon form, sadly. Definitely would have been happy with demon form here. Actually, oh yeah, this is not three leads though, right? That's right. 157 gold for the red mask. I don't think so. Uh, money is good in Act 4. Let's get some relics. First up, Nemesis. Not the world's greatest turn one. That's okay. We've got Corruption Dark Embrace down. That's probably more than enough to be not worried here.
bronze scales will do some damage to the heart for us. Iron wave could be nice if we run out of block, but I'm not actually too worried about that right now. How much more valuable is 157 gold at floor 42 than floor 1? I'd say it's more valuable on floor 1. Or if you're, to get it on floor 1 anyway. Can't spend money on floor 1, of course. Because that usually limits its utility. Money is only valuable on floors where there are shops, right? <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Hello, Corruption. Nice to see ya. Everyone's gonna die now. Good talk. Next turn, that is. Immolate is here. Excellent. Gain four energy and draw four cards, because this relic is OP. Trench doing work. Spun to one. Okay, the courier makes our gold go a bit further. That's nice. And I'm going to keep taking true grits. Transient shouldn't be too much of a problem. Gotta get the powers down. And even then, not necessarily. We can kill it, but we can get pretty close here. It does reach a point where we're out of skills completely, like this. If we haven't won the fight by this point, we're in trouble. But currently, I think the deck scales high enough that every fight should be won at this point. Time Eater, the Heart, you name it. So close to a kill. Are you sure we don't want another perfected strike? Huh? Huh? I have to upgrade a card? Oh no. Um... you. Upgrade Strike. Not the worst idea, actually. Not the worst idea. Ow. How dare you.
Powers, hello. Powers. Calipers are good here. At the start of our turn, lose 15 block rather than all of it. That means we can gain a whole bunch of block in one turn, then play Entrench, and we're set for the fight. Let's take another Disarm. Excellent. Another fight where we have to get our health back. That's not too bad, thankfully. I'm tempted to immolate here. Perfect. Burning Pact. Exhaust a card, draw more cards, or do we want a Heavy Blade for a finishing card? This Heavy Blade seems actually pretty good. Yeah, so many Blood Potions offered. Is Blood Potion better than the Sneko Oil? I don't think so. Draw 5 is too powerful here. I grab this Heavy Blade. Yeah, it's much better than Perfected Strike, that's for sure. Heck it. Alright, Tim. That is your real name. company. Not my beloved. It's not worth playing more cards here. This time you're just going to heal the damage. Now it is. Worthwhile, that is. All 
right, this is the point where we're out of block pretty much entirely, so we have to rely on our offense now to carry the day. And that it does. All right, one boss is down. Another boss is just beginning. This boss penalizes us for playing powers, which is kind of rude. As long as we have calipers, though, I think we're fine in this fight. Try winning without the corruption. I don't think that's the right answer in most fights, but oof. Jeez, oh, man. This is why we have the Sneka Whale, in case of draws like this, or when it really matters. I don't think I have to use it here, but uh, this is the kind of draw that we would use it on. That's bad. It's really bad. Maybe I do use it here. Always buy another potion. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Excellent. Now we're talking. Exhausted. I'd ideally like to exhume and trench, though. Perfect block. Good enough. Oh, but I didn't gain strength, huh? Definitely spooky. That's enough block. White Beast will not give us a potion from this fight, unfortunately. The bosses never drop anything. So even the White Beast statue is defeated here. Thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of all this strongness. Have I been here before? Oh one ten oh one was the time there. That's kind of cool. Another upgrade that doesn't matter at all. Upgrade strike again. Interesting how much faster this run was compared to the first. That's the power of the Snekowai, really. Snekowai makes for very busted runs. Happy with a block potion here. Card remove looks good. We can buy a burning pact. We can buy dual wield. Dual wield can be strong. 
allowing us to duplicate powers or attacks at their current cost. Dual wield is really good. We can do card remove, dual wield, block potion. And I think all of that is pretty good. We should buy the potion first as we reveal new things underneath. It's fine. Okay. Lose a strike. Lose a strike. And then we have 63 gold, not enough for Burning Pact. But yes, enough for Perfected Strike or Pummel, neither of which I actually want. So we leave. Huzzah! All right, I'd say this Snekawai has been very good to us over the course of the run. Quite happy with it. We can use one of our potions in this fight. I'm probably going to use the power po the block potion as I really value the power potion going into the heart fight. Should be a good turn for that block potion, huh? I can play both Juggernaut and Dark Embrace, although I would prefer to play the Defend over the Juggernaut. Hmm. We can always Reaper our health back, so that's not too big of a concern. Dark Embrace has to get played. Let's just save the energy then, since the damage is irrelevant. And the painfulness continues, alas. Although I can exhume Disarm, which will help. I guess so. It also draws stuff for me, right? Ah, there we go. Let's go defend first, then corruption. Turn around. Excellent. Want to leave enough health to Reaper them. get a mummified hand, meaning that powers make random cards in our hand free. We get a weak potion, good for a little bit of insurance in the first cycle, and we get two more hit points. I'm pretty happy with this overall. Very happy indeed. I guess the only question to my mind is, do we want to use the power potion on turn one, or do I want to wait until I draw dual wields. I think with the Apotheosis, we probably play it on turn one. Another Juggernaut or another Dark Embrace. Evolve's also decent, but I think we just want more Dark Embraces. That way, even if these are both three cost, we have a backup. Dark Embrace is more draw than Evolve is. Let's take another Dark Embrace. Get rid of Perfected Strike entirely. Bummer. Uh, we should play Close Line here. Passable turn one. We always survive the first cycle. That's good news. 
this isn't great news, this, turn, this hand, but uh, it's also not bad news. From you next turn, that should let us get all the stuff in play. Gonna corruption turn one, or gonna corruption immediately here. I need Reaper free, although I don't think I play Reaper. This definitely gets played. It's probably this first, I guess. I have no feel no pain down yet. Okay, we're gonna need as much block as possible. Oh, this is going either way though. It's too early to use the entrench. Dark Embraces, this should be safe. It is time. Okay, there we go, Entrench. Although we'd like to get some more block in hand, if possible. Not actually required. Which is good, because I'm not getting it. That'll have to do. to do. And now the bunkening. Take that. You big stinky heart. Blade weighs heavy on my heart. But we are the victors. GG. GG. That was cool. That was a, a, a middle difficulty run, which was fun. We had Sneko Eye, but it wasn't totally free. We had a bit of nerve wrackingness in the end. And that random entrench that I picked up totally paid off in a really huge way. When we picked the entrench, all I had was corruption. And I said, this could be a thing. Let's take it. And I'm really glad we did. Because now we win. Excellent.
most excellent Twitch chat. GG. Eight's a pretty dang good streak. I'm really happy with this one. We had a, a rough start to the ironclad only attempt. But I think that was me getting my sea legs back. Now I'm feeling like we're great. Calipers was in fact good here. Yeah, what has it been done? The spire sleepeth, and so shall I. That's true, the exhume also helped quite a bit. As it ended up being uh, very good in the late game. Highest known A20 ironclad streak is 19. Done by... Zeknar. That was Zeknar that did 19. What a maniac. A shout out to Zeknar. Zeknar is an excellent, excellent Spire player. Arguably the best Spire player at uh, a couple of the classes. Zeknar's Ironclad streak is still going too. Oh man. So, Zeknar is poised to break 20 with Clad, beating me to the punch here. Which is fine. That's something people are allowed to do. Good for him, if so. I'll have to tune in. And then Zeknar doing 27 on silent. I don't think I can repeat that, but I'll try. What we're going to be doing today, though, is switching it up to some Cobalt Core. Play some variety here. Do some deck building in space, 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 space. And get some more memory unlocks for our crew members. That's the plan, Twitch chat. Before that happens, I'm going to take a quick break, refill the legs, stretch the water. When I return, Cobalt Core. BRB, everybody. Don't go nowhere.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. And it's time to kick things over to some Cobalt Core. In space. Free McDurr says, did I know that Cobalt Core has a Monster Train style logbook? Yes, we had spotted that. There's unfortunately no in-game marker for unpicked cards. And they're only marked as question marks in the logbook. And you can't... Um, you can't open the logbook while you're at a card ward screen either, I don't believe. Oh yeah, we're gonna come down over here. You can, says Faley. Okay, that's more helpful then. We can find the cards we haven't uh, picked yet. Welcome back, one and all, to Cobalt Core. One part Slay the Spire, one part FTL Faster Than Light. It's a deck builder in space. And it's a very heckin' cute time. So far, we've unlocked four different ships out of five, and six different crew members out of eight. I think I want to play, uh, try another run on the Jupiter here, using an offense-heavy team. Perry plus Drake plus Max. I think the Jupiter without Isaac will be a bit challenging. This ship is all about launching drones. It has no cannons of its own. Instead, you launch a drone that serves as the main attack of the Jupiter. How's it going? Hand worked. I would say that um, <clears throat> Zeknar's win streak has definitely changed how I view the silent a little bit really started valuing front-loaded damage on that character a lot more after seeing what Zeknar can achieve with it. And uh, definitely valuing the card Alchemize a ton more, too. Nizar, thanks for the Prime sub in the 17 months. Let's start a run here. So we have to choose a downside. It's a pretty offense-heavy team. Let's lose the Max Shield. And then we upgrade a card, gain a random rare card, or upgrade two cards to type B. Which can be quite strong. Man, EMP slug when fired in duplicate is going to be absurd. Upgrade two random cards to type B. Get heat sink B, move two spaces to the right, and lose one heat. Flippable, I like that. And a two damage basic shot B. That sounds good to me. Rise and shine, baby. Don't you ever get tired? Don't you ever sleep? Sort of. Every five milliseconds, I pause my core loop and run code to recover unused memory. During this time, I cease to exist as a conscious entity. So you die and re are reborn 200 times a second? Yeah. What's it like to be dead? I don't know. If anything cool happens, it must take longer than five milliseconds. I see. Well, welcome to Cobalt Core. Core of combat in this game is done in a deck building style. You've got a five base draw per turn, three base energy per turn. You and your enemy have hull and shield. Shield can be replenished during combat. Hull is much harder to repair and persists between fights. We can also move our ship left or right with the evade function. We get one stack of evade at the start of each combat, and then we have to play cards to get more. Easier said than done, usually. The gimmick of this ship is deploying the Jupiter's moons, which allow us to channel attacks from them, essentially. Which you'll see momentarily. actually hit them. So each time we play an attack, every Jupiter's moon takes a shot equal to that attack power. So if we play a two attack with two drones out, four total damage. 
And how's about an EMP slug? Give him a blip lap. That's what I call damage. Is it hard to learn new games like this for me? No, I, I really find that I'm uh, quite a natural at picking up games, especially games that are similar to games I've played in the past. Hmm. Combustion engine is interesting. Zero cost card, move equal to your heat, left or right. Kind of like faint, move two and temp shield. Although it's not flippable. Let's take faint. Very spire-like map here. The big things to note, repair yards, very similar to campfires. It's a remove or an upgrade or a heal. Elites in purple drop artifacts. And events can be all sorts of stuff. I think the events are really fun. Let's take some events here. We have yet to see all the events. Lunge B is cute. Thinking about the five damage EMP slug here. As multiplied by the Jupiter's drones, that's going to be a just a game ending fight. Or a game ending attack. Oh, hey, it's, um, Soggins, I think his name is. Help! My missiles! Ah, this toad again. I'm actually a frog! <laughs> oh. Good, good for you, Soggins. So, Soggins has... a problem, which is that his missiles are firing backwards. And he will destroy himself with his missiles. We have to save him by shooting down the missiles. This is a really cool battle objective, I think. Oh, we can also, yeah, missiles take up the middle slot. Can't actually use our drones to shoot the missiles because missiles and drones can't coexist. Hmm. That seems like a problem. Definitely don't want to let him get hit by the Corrode Missile. Hmm. Yeah, we can delete one per turn, but that's about it. I'm not sure we can actually uh, save Soggins' very cool ship here. <clears throat> we can also move them with Drone Ship, that's right. So we can save two damage here by moving that out of the way. Okay. It keeps happening, he says. Surely you know what's up, sir. Okay, as long as you keep dodging your own missiles, this is easy. Wait, no, I'm just out of missiles. Toodaloo. Hey, I'm alive. I can't thank you enough, so I won't. Have one treat. Good old missile malware. Oh, I wonder if this stacks. Oh, I bet it does. Seeker Missile is also pretty cool. Just deal two damage to the enemy no matter where they are. Or we're going to have a random artifact. I think I want the uh, the Missile Malware. And then we can just permanently turn enemies' missiles against them. That sounds awesome. <clears throat> it's 
enemy has an attack drone. I'll get rid of it. Explosive Slug. For one heat, fire a two damage piercing shot. Too much heat and we'll kill ourselves. <clears throat> Although having a piercing attack is pretty valuable here. Enrage is also interesting. Stun every single enemy intent, but give them one strength. I actually quite like that. Um, as we're able to do so much damage that buying one turn is probably all we need. So let's take in Rage. <laughs> Dead or alive, baby? Alive! No. Oh. Definitely want to move over one here. Looks like we'll be taking some damage, unfortunately. If we move over one, we're taking two plus one. This enemy's attacks are very good against our awkward ship layout, that's for sure. I can take only two if I move over twice, actually. This misses. This hits here. This misses too. Retract the wing? I wish I could. So we want to dodge and block here. Lunge gets me out of harm's way, primarily. Got 20 hull, so we can't use the EMP slug to our advantage. We will take one, unfortunately. Seems fine. We enrage. It's time. Have some malware. Yes, that does stack. Not that it helps us here, unfortunately. Oh, shoot. Hmm. Hmm. I moved too far over here. That's what I did. At least he's a kill. I don't see a kill. Hmm. 
do you get a kill? Yeah, we're, we're not even close to a kill, unfortunately. This, this piece says armor. And even if it didn't, we'd only deal six. This is exactly the problem I was expecting with the ship and crew members, by the way, is that we don't have any left-right mobility, really. And uh, if we can't keep the drones up, we can't do enough damage. Let's see, we can feint two. Dodge. Okay, actually, that works fine. That stays alive. I can even take one to get another moon out, which might be important. This fight's very dangerous. We have EMP slug coming up next turn. No, we're fine. We just go Jupiter's moons, EMP slug. And it's over. That wasn't too bad. Ventilator. Draw two, discard one at random to lose some heat. Another enrage. Take another enrage. Shield last between combats. Don't have a whole lot of it, but that still sounds really good. Just a little bit more protection. That said, overdrive every four turns could be even more damage output for us. Take shield memory. Gain one energy every third turn. Excellent. That's right, this game is available on Switch and PC. Not sure if you can get it anywhere else at the moment. Hmm. Alright, just stun it. No auto dodge this turn. Hmm. Automatically move out of the way to the right. But now it won't. <clears throat> Get blapped. I think I want to uh, lunge. Autopilot. Immediately after you play the left slash rightmost card in your hand, move left or right one till the end of turn. That's kind of cool. I'm just going to take a lunge. Definitely want more mobility here. Bet you won't let us shuffle up all your ship parts. I would really appreciate that because this ship is really awkward. So surely it can't get any worse, right? That's better. Now now the uh, empty space is on the edge, actually. I quite like that. We have a, a regular width ship. Sure is ugly, though. I knew you were cool. How is this better? How? Literally how? Draw a card, gain an energy. Give them two power drive. That's kind of badass, actually. I 
I like that. We should upgrade Enrages to Enrage B. Heck yeah. All right, Crystal Man. Show us what you got. Big Crystal. Good shots. GG. Okay, that wasn't too bad. We had a little bit of a sketchy time against that early elite, but things worked out really well. Pillage and Plunder. Attack for two damage if you get a kill, gain max hull. There's also Clean Exhaust. Make our exhaust and single-use cards cost zero energy. I haven't taken that card yet. It's an expensive feed, but uh, health is pretty hard to come by in this game. How many of Jupiter's moons can you have at once? I don't believe there's a limit. Just like the real Jupiter, you can have a completely nonsense amount of moons. Turn our shield into overdrive, huh? Nah. I think I'm gonna skip these. Start of combat, gain one power drive. On second turn, the enemy gets it too. Gain a bunch of stuff with the Genesis Canister. Or remove three cards. I'm thinking just get more damage here. It's going to make uh, multi-shot really deadly. Hey, books. Um, hello? One. Did it work? Whoa! Ta-da! How'd you do that? Crystals! Crystals! I couldn't help but notice that you have a special role in this time loop. 
Can I join your crew one of these times? I don't see how we could stop you. Okay, see you real soon. And then she's gone. Into Act Two. wait on EMP slug. So the enemies are going to do more damage as well, but since I can cancel their attack constantly, I don't think I care. Cancel your turn. Oh, that's right. That'll immediately draw another Jupiter's moon. Oh, my goodness. That's right. Get blapped. Autopilot 2. It's kind of cool, actually. Shuffles the hand, though. Skip these. Less is more sometimes. An event here? Probably double the lead, I think. Snoot! How's it going, Snoot? Snoot, you're cancelled. Fun fact. Just how it is. Snoot's gonna get the boot. Telling me I can do Jupiter's moons and then enrage will always draw Jupiter's moons again. Holy crap. Toasty. Lose one heat, gain two evade. That's a great card. Definitely want a little bit more left right movement. This is very efficient. Excellent. Hee-hoo! Welcome to my Emporium of Wondrous Ideas. These are not absolutely useless. Give me Buckshot, please, because we have Power Drive. So this is one damage three times. We can upgrade that to one damage five times. Waltz is pretty cute, too. Give me Buckshot! Hoo-hoo! Farewell! And now... Glurp time. Hmm. This is a good turn for Enrage. Is it though? Yeah, because I want to be here. Yes, let's enrage. Good.
Kaboom! To your face. Hot compress. Heal one hull. Gain one temp shield, gain three heat. Interesting card. Right, most card gains retain. Memory leak is pretty powerful. Attack for three damage at one cost. Is not bad. We can do a little better, but... Nah, we'll skip. How does heat work? If you reach three heat, at the end of your turn you'll take one hull damage. And then you remove the heat. More energy on turn one, or every five attacks gain one evade. I like gaining more evade. Crosslink is quite strong. Can I interest ye in yet another duel with honor? The enemy may behave differently if you follow or break the rules. I accept your duel, Sir Ratzo. Nice weak point. What do you think of having the rules broken? Brigand! Scoundrel! You've broken a sacred pack and shall pay in turn. Shall I? I shall not. Got him. Lazy Barrage for two cost. Attack for one, then move right. Attack for one... No, move the enemy right. What? This attack hits the enemy, it will instantly move the enemy one space to the right. Oh, this is going to be really silly. <laughs> I've got to try it. If that does what I think it's going to do, it's going to be very funny. The start of combat, gain temp shield equal to your missing hull. Okay, sure. And yeah, I do want another artifact, right? Wants a missile malware spike? I mean, not, huh? Cancels the intense anyway. Let's be in rage first then.
can't line up the shot with my drone. Thought I could, but I can't. Hmm. Secret missile too, that's not good. At least Faint has us covered here, mostly. Hmm. I don't like it. Gain two energy or two cost attack for three twice. Give me that. That's a lot of damage. At least we get some bonus uh, shield here on turn one, such that I don't need to move now. Though I should if I know what's good for me. Jupiter's moons intact. Hmm. Guess I'll use this then. Time for Enrage B, I guess. Let's try it out. trying to figure out how Lazy Barrage is going to work here. Uh, if we fire Lazy Barrage, they, they shoot the following. One, two fires, we move here. Three fires, we move here. Then the second shifting. One, fires, misses. Two hits, moves. Three hits, moves. So the whole thing is... Uh, no, the six is going to be lined up with a cockpit if I do that. So that actually just kills me. However, it looks like I cannot maneuver, so we're dead either way. Not quite. We have live on one currently. This is bad. Not enough dodge in this deck. We already knew that. Um, but wait, I have the freaking crosslink. Excellent. Crosslink saved my life. Does that mean we can do the lazy barrage? It sure looks like it. Okay, Lazy Barrage. That's really funny. Excellent, really. Does eight, six. <laughs> GG. Okay, that was that was good. Glad we took that cross link. Let's grab another hot foot. 
There's also save state. Save your current position to a load state. We didn't end up using that very much when we took it before. Enemy cockpits are weak, or the missile bay has armor. It's right in the dead center, actually. That's kind of cool. Although I don't think we're frequently getting hit in the missile bay. This could save our life against a multi-attacking enemy. I'll take it. Meowdy! All offense. All the time. Excellent time to rage. This enemy's gonna have a lot of damage though. I'm a bit worried about that. Have I fought Cleo yet? I have not. I've heard the horror stories. I have not fought Cleo yet. Now we do hot fit moon malware. That said, that is a terrifying amount of damage. The enemy can level at us. is going to be really funny in this fight. And yeah, it can definitely be hard to keep the drones up. I guess I should enrage again, although I'm kind of counting on the... the missile bays reversing the missiles here. I probably shouldn't. We should use the enrage again. Turn a fan on or something. the lazy barrage. How's it going, cool light wing? All is well here. Just got past the second boss on our first cobalt core run of the day. Life's pretty good. We've seen Perry with this ship be insane before. In fact, Perry's even better because we're giving strength to the enemy with these enrages. Definitely give me Perry. Perry's going to be absurd. What about simplicity? Just dunk three cards. It's 
There's definitely a couple cards I wouldn't mind losing here. Let's go with simplicity. Lose the basic block. Lose the basic shot. And I think lose reroll. Also tend to lose admin deploy. Greetings, friends. Have some strength. You know, cuz. It blapped. Oh, I see. This one doesn't exhaust. Hello there. Would you care to engage in some debate? Turn an upgrade of A or B card into the opposite version. We're happy with what we have. Oh my goodness, you can add another one to the Lazy Barrage? That's ridiculous. Okay, this is one of the fights I thought we might have trouble with. This enemy has multi-attacks. And an asteroid field in front of them. Yeah, this enemy could be really dangerous, actually. Not doing the multi-attack yet, though. That's good. Multi-blast. This enemy is also really dangerous with the enrages. Actually, we can do Jupiter, Enrage, Jupiter. Let's do that. Now we can shoot him. Four by three. By this. Move them with Lazy Barrage. Let's see. Two, two and move. Two and move. Then this is going to miss. Two and move a third time. So they move over one, two, three. And drills are here and here. Doesn't sound right.
I bet it was Sockets. How's it going, Stephanie, sad girl? Got us in a tricky situation right now. EMP and basic shot lethal. I think you might be missing that this is an empty space, and currently the Jupiter drone will miss the enemy ship. So no, we can't just shoot them. Lots of suggestions that are impossible. We have to play two attacks to get an evade, I believe. This is... Where does this count to five? Wait, actually, how many attacks do we need to play? I'm not sure. Hmm. I think just one. Okay, just one. Each drone does not increment it once, I don't think. Oh, but Lazy Barrage does. Lazy Barrage increments it more than one. Each of these counts as an attack. So this is three attacks. So wait. Um, so shift the middle to the left. And then if we EMP... Oh yeah, that's also pretty safe, right? If we stun this, and then we can move one, we're also fine. Assuming that it does work the right way. Yeah, assuming this actually correctly counts, that works too, right? I do like that option. Yeah, we stun this, and we do a bunch of damage. We got one evade. Yes, counts to five. So then we're fine. Okay. 33 damage parry. Instantly killed. Explosive slug A. Three damage piercing for one heat. Or arguably the much better version of the card. Three damage piercing for negative three heat and exhaust. Take exothermic release B. Oh, this enemy is always free with the Jupiter. This enemy sleeps for two turns, meaning we can perform nonsense before they awaken. Let's see if it is actually at the end of turn two here. Prepare to be enraged. Sixteen damage times four. Okay, this is dumb now. Barrage! Attack for one, move to the right, attack for one, move to the right, attack for one. Yes. Choose a card with exhaust. It no longer exhausts. Or a random enemy part is made brittle that is not marked until you hit it. Let's make enrage B, not exhaust. <laughs> that seems dumb. Hello, dearies. We want weapons. Give me all your pistachio macaroons. Both? Let's remove a card. Maybe the trash can, Grandma. Non-exhausting parry. 
Why would you need that? <laughs> we now have the Daka Drum. For every five parry cards played, we get a chip shot, zero cost damage. Remember, all purple cards are parry cards. Not in front of everyone, please. Give me Buckshot A. <laughs> Thanks. Oh my, spooky. Or is it though? Barrage could get me killed. Don't do that. Hit it for 11 sounds fine. Hit it for 11 sounds fine. need that. This card's too expensive, although I like what it does conceptually. Too much energy in a, in a game where energy is quite scarce. Let's remove that basic dodge. Time to go! Good luck! Here's our final boss. The Cobalt. Well, definitely presents a challenge, especially for this ship. We're gonna struggle to both protect ourselves and keep ourselves alive, I think. lost any runs in this game yet. What do we get power drive from? That comes from our Berserker Drive, the boss artifact that Perry picked up. So I'm going to move two over in this direction. Jupiter's Moon's Hot Foot Buckshot is okay. We don't do any damage with Buckshot, that's fine. Just getting a moon out is important here. That's my hope, anyway. Take two, but that's fine. That gave me evade, too, because it was it's five attacks, so we fully gain one evade off the cross link when we use that card. Okay. Excellent. We absolutely want Enrage here. Coming. Let's 
definitely hard to protect ourselves at this point. I think we're gonna have to take this hit on purpose. It's a lot of damage incoming, but we're also gonna be able to deal a lot of damage. Well, I don't like that we're getting uh, a couple of our drones blown up here. Reposition to prevent two of that damage with Hotfoot, that might be worth it. Then the missile malware will kick in, that'll help too. Let's see, yeah, let's play Hotfoot Missile Malware, I guess. Didn't account for the ultra heated piercing slugs, huh? Been into two drones. Hopefully that'll be enough here. Depends on where they're positioned, I guess. It sure. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Perry does 35 damage twice. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Got him. You are growing stronger. Who shall it be this time? Let's max out Perry's memories first. Literally deleted. That was cool. We gave the enemy more strength and then the Perry killed them. It's great. Perry's Perry. All the suffering in this time loop, I hold you responsible for it. Your understanding of the situation is flawed, but your anger is useful. Good. I got plenty more. Good. Good. <laughs> Good. T minus 13,505 days. Yay! Chocolate cake! Happy birthday, Hyperia! Cake, 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 cake. Here you go, sweetie. Be careful, Periwinkle. Blomp. Oh no, Hyperia, you dropped your cake on the floor. It was my lack of honor, vigilance, and discipline that caused this. I will make sure this never happens to anyone ever again. And so an oath was sworn. It makes sense to me. The Cake Crusader. Now that's an origin story for the ages. That was great. Clocking in barely over an hour there. Both runs with the freaking Jupiter have been amazing. GG. Books. An alchemist, her cards use shard as a resource to power up defense, movement, and mid-row actions. Let's take books on a run. Let's do a uh, Artemis run. I want to do a Briggsless run. We'll go Dizzy, Perry, and books. We'll max out Perry's story here. Charge shards. the max hole this time. Max shield is pretty good with Dizzy. Random rare card or remove a card, then gain one, and three, one of three common cards. That's really cool as a bonus. Remove a card and draft a card. Give me the random rare. See what happens. Mitosis. At the start of your sh turn, lose one shield and gain twice as much temp shield. Hey, wow! Books! So this is what the inside of your ship looks like. Yeah. Can I press this button? No. Wait, actually, yes. <laughs> T 
Save it for later. Mage Hands. Block one incoming damage if you have a shard. Deal two damage. How do we get shards? Put a crystal shard in your hands. Hmm. Yeah, twice as much as one. I'm just wondering about the upgrade for this, maybe. Let's try it. shield if I had none. Not sure I actually like that ability at the moment. Yeah, it's kind of wasting stuff. Okay, I see the crystal shard is reusable. That makes sense. Now we're talking. I can't move. I can't move. Sad day. Ow. Oof. But my face, though. Okay, we're good, we're good. That was kind of spicy. Swizzle shift. Move two spaces to the left. If you have one shard, spend it to gain two shards. Stun shot to stun something or sidestep or retaining move one. That's always also quite nice. Swizzle shift. I'll take the sidestep. I like that it's zero cost. I like that it's retained. We can do three elites. I've never done three elites before. I'm books. Oh, cool. You can change which part is the special parts. Yeah, you can you can gain mitosis too if you want. Buoyant. Always draw first. Surge A here. Might be too greedy. We're gonna find out. What I'm not gonna do is use mitosis again. That was a mistake. attack the enemy and take more hull damage, or I can shoot the missile. Because I'm shooting the missile. I can do both, actually. I can multi-shot, move, shoot. There we go. Kick that butt! Whoa, hey, language! Perry, I have an idea. Just shoot them. Brilliant. Perry, why didn't you think of this earlier?
The enemy is scaling a little bit. Just gotta KO them. through enough. Concerning. This is off to a pretty bad start. Wait, oh yeah, you have armor too. There we go. Definitely tired. Magic battery. Spend three shards to gain one energy? What a terrible trade. No way. Take the wave beam. I guess we're kind of all in on this elite. Either we win or we don't. And I think we're gonna don't. He says he's good at this, and I believe him. Basic dodge there. It's all good though. That seems perfectly fine. Die. Exciting. All reliable. Launch a geode. A rare subtype of asteroid gives you a shard when it's destroyed. It's kind of cool. I like a zero cost uh, blocker, which is what this is. Give me that. Resonance fork. Fill your shard to max at the start of combat. Yes. Maybe wanted acid cannon there? Definitely maybe. Look, look, weak spots. Shoot them in the weak spots. The wave cannon's good at this fight. Piercing. Oh shoot, that's right. I forgot about this status. Glad I had shield for that. That could have just killed me. Silly me. want to build up enough evade here, really.
Can't hit the weak spot with a wave beam. there was rude. We're okay, though. Quantum Quarry. Gain one shard every turn. I'll take a multi-blast. We need some damage. Multi-blast is good damage. Shield memory is excellent. Our shield lasts between combats. Now we're talking. That's going to be very useful. That can set us up for the third elite. Shard Collector. You can hold one more shard, which gets filled to max. Or good old Crosslink is free evasion. Counts twice on multi-blast, multi-shot, too. Crosslink is great. But more shard. Let's take more shard. Jumper cable's actually not bad, right? For that turn one shield? You're not wrong. first. Although that would have moved this guy, so whatever. I think they're primed to dodge. You think? Tosis has been pretty bad. Don't have much dodge. Guess you better play that. It's in scaling out of control, though. Surge? I guess so. Yeah, this attack keeps growing in power. That's not the biggest deal, though. here. 
There we go. Quite an annoyance, that thing. Zero draw. Draw all zero cost cards from your discard pile. Hey, it's all for one. The board is infinite in both directions. That's right. Mostly just gets a sidestep, huh? We're struggling for movement without our pilot, so I do like faint here. Faint is good. And I decided this would let me beat the elite somehow because we're supposed to keep our shield, but I don't... Maybe I do have shield. More practice, huh? Oh yeah, we've got three shields. Okay. Now we're talking. Apply a status. That's right. Drake applies heat. It's really deadly, too. If we get hit with heat, we're going to die, as it will do core, uh, hull damage. Spooky. Very spooky. So we can't allow ourselves to get hit again, huh? be the end. It's certainly possible. Or it could just be the beginning, you know? Need to not draw my toasts again, I suppose. Yeah, I could move over twice and shoot. Lunch. Excellent. We were able to get through Drake, no problem there. Must have played four cards this turn. Avid reader. Curious. Spend all of our shards to gain block. That's kind of cool, actually. I like block evolution. Jumper cables are back. Let's take the jumper cables, because... Our health. Could repair some hull for the boss fight, or we can just be badasses. Seems to me upgrading multi blast will make the boss fight easier anyway. Can we win? Interesting formation. Did get multi blast on turn one. Let's move and fire. Secure. 
accumulating some dodge for later is going to be a really good idea. Pretty safe spot that we're in, though. Shields are up, so we can take the hit here. And we can sidestep to take a lot less, too. Probably a good idea. Can't block though. I like this spot we were parked in. That strips all of the shield. I don't want to do all of the shield. This is fine. Far enough to the left to avoid here. We have to lunge back to our previous position. Oh, and we can sidestep to avoid the two even. Yeah, it's even better. Keep two shields. Then we're good through this turn. Let's get mitosis down, I guess. Here's multi blast to save the day. GG. Very sketchy sector one, but we're alive. We got actual hull now. Gain a non temporary crystal shard. So this turns into a real copy of crystal shard and heals us for two one time. There's also payback. Whenever the ship is hit, it immediately shoots a one damage attack. That can be quite strong with a heavy shield build. Given that we've got lots of defense, I do like payback conceptually. I haven't done a payback build. Let's try it out. Gain three shield and three evade on the first turn. Gain temporary shield anytime we gain real shield. Oh, shield burst is really cool with payback. Or draw two more cards every turn, but we can no longer skip cards. Block evolution with shield burst is nuts. Let's try it. Got another crystal chunk for science. Are you sure you should be touching that? It's fine. I'm more interested in the effect it has on you. On me? Yeah, look, your holographic matrix, it's flickering. So what? And if I hold it closer... What? What is it? Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> what 
was all that? <laughs> I like gained and lost shield a bunch of times. What happened there? Either way, awesome. Um, deploy the payback, I suppose. Evolution even work properly, I'm not sure. Fire Shield A. One shield, two shards. I want the shield surge that can raise our max shields. We definitely don't want to use blocker burnout. Let's grab another shield surge. This time one that can be upgraded. Emporium of Wondrous Ideas. Take one, heal one, or move like crazy. What's the point of it all, you say? Not much, not for this deck. Mitosis is like a power, that's right, it happens every turn. Radical. Let's see, and this is all the same nodes, right? Now oh, I get an event going up, and I get the elite leader rather than earlier. Let's fight Spike. For better or worse. Spike's time to shine, says Spike. Let's see about that, Spike. Payback's cute on this turn. Because they shoot me. Oh no, the missile goes first. Never mind, that didn't work how I wanted it to. Fair enough. shooting me, I don't care. Maybe I do care. According to plan. GG. Scoop. Yeah, what's mining drill? Dual card. This card has two separate sets of actions. 
attack for zero, gain a shard, or lose a shard, attack for one are the two options. How curious. Odd. Take a scoot. Detecting a minefield up ahead. Let's look for cool stuff. We'll probably barely explode at all. I'll gain one artifact for one hit point. Losing three in this one's tough. Get the good old cross link. Every five times we attack, gain one evade. Premeditation. Sort of each combat, gain a glissade. Or one max hole and heal one for defeating a boss or elite. Take the premeditation, giving us a, a dodge two to the side here. Move left, or move right, rather. All I want. Scoot. Maybe you sidestep there, maybe. It's fine. How does the crosslink work? Is it magic? Yes. It's good to know. Key back at the very bottom. Payback time. Hit me, I dare you. Although I probably don't want to take the heavy missile to the cockpit, huh? Red Skull means takes double damage on that location. Is what that means. Crystalline offshoot. Crystals are ready to go, and so is payback. Hit me.
max out. Ah, no, the force shield is plenty, actually. That is max. Acid cannon seems like the sort of thing that could be pretty good. As that allows us to uh, slowly whittle down a foe. I could see multi-stun being good, too. Stun, then move, then stun. Once again. To shut down specific dangerous enemy intents. I like that, too. Let's try the multi-stun. I don't think I've taken that yet. Make something brittle. Or every time your discard pile is shuffled back into the draw pile, the enemy loses one hull. Max three damage per turn. Let's take Fracture Detection. I don't think we're going to shuffle that often. Books! Anyone like some books? Multi-stun A is pretty cool. Oh yeah, we should upgrade Payback, of course. Yeah, Payback B. Two shield, two retaliate. Oh, that's four cost, though. Hold on, I can't afford that. No, we have to do Payback A. I guess that means we're not uh, not upgrading Payback. If I can't afford it. Let's do the multi-stun A, then. See how that feels. Against Riggs. Pirate turned regular person. Yeah, we have a brittle point to find. So we have enough hold right now. We should just shoot at them. Yeah. Okay, that's not the brittle point. Probably no. It is. Back connected. This is pretty safe. And this will get cancelled if I understand correctly. Guards. 
hit him. Now we're talking. Rigs. Good fight. Full health restored. We're offered parry once again. Overflowing power. Spend four shards to gain one power drive, one max shard, and one shard. That's pretty cool. Overflowing Power B takes five shards to give you two power drive. Overflowing Power A flips the order. You gain the shard first. And yes, we do start with four shards. So yes, I'm super taking this card. Is this game easy or am I just goaded? I would say this is a medium difficulty game at minimum. We haven't lost yet, but um, it's definitely possible to lose. And this game can be tough with uh, a rough draw. First time you play a zero cost card, do its actions twice. Cool. Old reliable twice. Glass cannon gain extra energy every turn, but our cannon is weak. Or there it is, prototype 22. Gain one max shield on pickup. Gain one shield at the start of every turn. If your shield was already full, take two hull damage instead. Here's my problem. Um, we have shield memory. So I think this might just kill us. <laughs> Isn't this no downside with mitosis? It depends. Do you consider taking two hole damage on the beginning of turn one a downside? With no chance to avoid. Because I do. <laughs> I sure do. I think, uh, no thank you. Last cannon unlocks the retaliation upgrade. That's true. Let's take last cannon. So many things happen. Yeah, we would have taken two whole damage here. Just instantly. Instantly two whole damage. This being weak is kind of bad, though, yeah? Bummer. Power overwhelming. Yes. Now scoot. And the wing is brittle, we determined.
Javas, thanks for the prime sub in the 11 months. Beat A18 Heart on Ironclad with a double tap drop kick infinite that only materialized in the middle of Act 3. That's pretty cool, actually. Swizzle Shift. Momentum can be quite good. Any fight that we're drawing back through the deck again, momentum's gonna be great, actually. Let's go this way. Kind of cross the middle here. Got nothing but time on my hands, he says. I don't want your garbage, though, friends. Great payback? I guess so. What brings you to Grandma's Bakery and Weapons Mark? Get chocolate cake, of course. Delicious. Hey, you've been loitering around the Cobalt for a while, right? It's called the Cobalt? Yeah. Have you been talking, taking sensor readings of it? They'd be really helpful for me. I don't know, maybe when I stole this ship, it didn't come with a manual. This guy's the Seeker Missile, dude. Normally quite a problem. I think with this build, it shouldn't be an issue. Launch a Seeker Missile every turn, which normally would be annoying. We don't really care that much, thankfully. Edges. Or the Stun Calibrator. Your second attack each turn does stun. I think that's quite useful. We can even maybe use the Retaliation attacks to inflict stun sometimes. Which ought to be exceptionally good. Now we wait for the corrosion to do its dirty work. 
Hey, there's the brittle spot. The cannon takes double damage. Excellent. Okay, that's too much damage, though. too much damage. That's more like it. Face though. GG. Acid Cannon 3. Or Acid Cannon B. 4 damage, 1 corrosion. Kind of whatever. Another block evolution. I don't have enough shard gain for a second one, honestly. If we're using overflowing power. Keep skipping. Every three dizzy cards played, gain a shield. Definitely. Definitely. Hello, friends. Crystals ready to go. Nice dodge. For an amount equal to your shield. Or even more shield raising with boost capacitors. I think I want boost capacitors. Although shield gun does seem pretty cool. Extra battery is also not horrible here. What does that upgrade to? Can that be upgraded to upgrade the max shield twice? Yes, two and two is what I want. Pad. All right. I'm going in, don't wait up. Time for the cobalts. We got overflowing power and payback on turn one, which is pretty good. Can't play the overflowing power though. We should play the pay payback first. Mm -hmm. 
is a great place to sit. We can just shoot the central cannon, relying on our stun calibrator to keep us intact here. Not sure if I'm ready for mitosis. Should probably play it, though. I'm a little worried it could backfire. It's just basic block. Yeah, the stun worked there. It cancelled the card being added. That's pretty insane, actually. Six damage incoming? That's fine. Keep hitting the core here for big damage. Jam Jam! Thanks for the gifted scub to Scravel. Welcome to the Cozy Zip Club. Play card. I did that in the wrong order. That's okay. Life's good. Take four damage. Just a little spooky. We're doing a bunch, though. Raise the shields. A proper slugfest, no problem. This thing is no match for us at all. GG. Yeah, really good deck for that fight. It's not expecting the final boss to be so easy. You are growing stronger. Barry, get your third memory. Hey! Hello. No threats this time? No, I'm tired. That is understandable. If I could ease this burden, I would. Actually, this infinite void we're in? Can I take a quick nap in here? No one has asked that before, but yes, you may take a nap. Thanks, boss. How long do you wish to nap? Nap well, little one. Sleep time. T minus 97 days. Begin recording. Work on the core continues, but the questions we started with remain unanswered. I haven't told the rest of the crew about the contingency plan. They don't need to know, and it will only... Hey, are you doing a ship's log? Dizzy. Hi. Yes, I am making a log entry. Cool. Keep going. I can't, you're making me nervous. Sorry, I was hanging out on the other deck, but actually, um... The huge weird ship with just the four of us on it. It's super creepy. I don't like it either. So I figured I'd come out and hang out on their bridge with you now. For protection. In case there's, like, ghosts. Do you think my laser rifle works on ghosts? I figured it might have, like, a ghost setting. It doesn't. But yeah, stay up here. There's plenty of bunks. Sweet! I'll go get all my stuff. And for the record, I'm not scared. Together, we simply provide an elevated threat profile in a variety of, um, tactical, um... Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. GG. D. Kirby, thanks for the 11 months of support. So close to that full year. Great run, Twitch chat. So we still have one, two, three, nine memories to unlock, which means we're exactly halfway done. And we're done with Perry for now. Not that we're done playing with Perry, mind you. GG. 
RPG. Guess I gotta do some more runs with books. It's only an option for skeletons here. One more winning run to unlock the final ship. There's the logbook. Oh, I see. So here we can see what combinations we've won with and what cards we have unlocked. Interestingly, it seems like some characters have more cards than others. Curious. And so the color combos that are highlighted are, are crew combinations we've won with now. There certainly are a lot to do. Devs have said they're planning to add more bosses and daily runs. That's pretty encouraging. What if they'll do higher difficulty after that? That'd be neat too. Even as the game is right now, I think it's super cute, at least worth playing through to unlock all the memories one time, and that's what I plan on doing. Looks like we need to do a Drake, Max, and Books run next. That's what I'm seeing here. Eight characters makes 56 possible crew combinations. That alone is a lot of replayability right there. It's like Monster Train level variety in deck building. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. That said, Twitch chat, I'm very happy with the runs we had today. Some excellent Spire runs, some excellent Cobalt Core runs. That's where I'm going to stop things here for now. But I hope you all have a cozy, cozy time. We'll be back tomorrow, not later than noon Eastern time. Planning on catching many of you then. Uh, we're going to be picking up our clad streak. Currently eight wins in a row and counting. And uh, I'm not sure what else tomorrow. Maybe some more variety. Some more... Cobalt core. Some more stuff. Who knows? See you later, Shmi. Bailey, Virtual256, Ripnator, Ratchet Power, Jam Scampy, Cross Up MK, and everybody else. Thank you so, so much for watching. Till next time, my friends, stay cozy and have a good one. Toodaloo!